Comfort. This is just a quick reminder for our teachers in Dactis. Please take note of the following. Accomplish the TIP registration form sent to you by your TWGs or the TWGs assigned to your department. Do not forget to register on our attendance link and have a screenshot of it. Attendance link will be posted or will be flashed on the screen later. Lastly, is to take photos while watching the orientation for you will be using that to create your own photo collage as part of your output for today's orientation. Are we all ready for the second part of our virtual orientation? The sport is considered as the meat of the program for we will be learning the different modules of the teacher's induction program. As what Mrs. Verana stated a while ago, TIP consists of six modules divided into number of sessions. Let us not wait any longer and begin the session proper. Learning the TIP policy is necessary for us to do it right. In order for the teachers in Dactis follow proper directions. So, let us all welcome Ms. Geraldine De Los Reyes, the TIP Assistant Coordinator of Santa Ana National High School, as she will discuss to us the Depth and Order 47 Series of 2017, or known as the Teachers Induction Policy. Let us give her a warm virtual applause. Okay, thank you very much to our Techie Experts host for today's live streaming of TIP Orientation, Sir Jopet and Ma'am Gwely. Before anything else, I would like to greet a pleasant afternoon to each one of us, to our dear principal, Sir Alvarez, and to all the department heads and master teachers, and to all the newly hired teachers out there watching. Once again, good afternoon. My task is to give you a blunt of information about the Deputy Order Number 43, Series of 2017, also known as Teachers Induction Program Policy. I will be discussing a summary of this 10 pages Deputy Order from the EO, uh, from the CO, signed by the Deputy Secretary Briones, and later I will give you the sample of the expected MOVs in the portfolio as part of your final output as a TIP mentees. But before I start, I would like you to read kung ano nakikita ninyo ngayon sa slide. And what is your thoughts about the photo? It says, Everybody says, teaching is so easy, just like walking in a park. But only teachers know that the park is the Jurassic Park with a variety of dinosaurs. So, ano ang masasabi ninyo tungkol sa memes na yan? If you're going to ask me what is my thoughts about the picture, I will tell you later before I end my discussion. So, let us proceed to our first page of the Deped Order Number 43, Sirs of 2017. In line with the teacher induction program for the newly hired teachers, the Department of Education through the Teacher Education Council issues the enclosed teacher induction program policy on the implementation of the TIP. DepEd fully supports the continuing professional development and progress of the newly hired teachers based on the principle of lifelong learning and the department's commitment to the development of new and beginning teachers. This policy will remain in force and in effect unless sooner repelled, amended, or rescinded. Pakibasa ng nakabilog na salita. Remain in force. Ibig sabihin, whether you like it or you like it, wala kayong choice kung didadaan talaga kayo sa TIP dahil nandito kayo sa Department of Education. And immediate dissemination of and strict compliance with this order is directed. Again, strict compliance. So, ano yung mga nakapaloob sa TIP program policy? Especially sa order number 43, series of 2017. Makikita natin dito yung rationale, yung legal basis, bakit nagkaroon ng TIP program. And next is the scope, yung supplement mismo ng TIP program. And the definition of terms, 
Actually, maraming definition of terms, pero pumili ako ng dalawa. So, tatlo. Newly hired teacher is a teacher with zero to three experience in the public school system and further classified as beginning or experienced teachers. Actually, uh, sa private school nito, minsan tinatawag na provisionary teachers yung zero to three years. Pago ka matawag na tenured or seasoned teacher. Sa atin, sa DepEd, newly hired teacher ang tawag sa inyo. Kayo yung mga nag-undergo ng TIP. And the teacher induction program is a systematic and comprehensive training scheme for newly hired teachers as part of professional development toward effective teaching and commitment for the profession. From the definition itself, makikita na natin ang objective ng TIP. At the end of the three-year cycle, meron bang professional development sa isang teacher na na-mentor o na-tulungan na, 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 ng, mentor, ng mentor at the same time, makikita ba towards ang kanyang pagiging effective teaching at the same time, commitment niya for the profession. And then, TRP mentor, mentor sino-sino ba sila? Si department head, si master teacher na na-assign sa inyo. Yun yung sa definition of terms. Next is the policy statement. And under the policy statement is the TIP framework. So as you can see, the TIP is represented by the input, ito yun, the process, and the outcome. The input is the result of the inventory to diagnose the current competencies. Paano ba ini-inventory ang mga newly hired teachers? As of the moment, meron tayong ISAT at yung developmental plan. Yun yung sisilipin ni master teachers and department head kung paano niya matulungan o ma-mentor yung kanyang mentee. And in the process, the teacher induction program and the outcome. Yung nandito sa ikatlong box. Ito ay tinatawag na IPO, Input, Process, and Outcome Framework. The monitoring and evaluation provides a mechanism to, continuous, to continuously improve the program from the entry level, program implementation, and its impact on the teaching and learning process. So as you can see, paikot-ikot lang siya kasi hindi nagtatapos sa three-year cycle lang ang pag-mentor ng mentor ninyo sa mga mentees. Then next is the procedure under Sa procedure ay ang modules, hindi ako ang mag-discuss niyan, kundi ang ating mga assigned mentors and the implementation. Okay, sa implementation, makikita nyo dito yung three-year cycle. Year 1, year 2, and year 3. Nandito, nakapaloob sa year 1 kung ano yung mga gagawin. Merong rule out of the national orientation of trainers, orientation for newly hired teachers. Ayun pa natin ito ginawa. Dapat ginawa natin ito sa first quarter ng year 1. Then, meron tayong formal or one formal classroom observation. Sa inyong, sa mga newly hired teachers, apat na formal classroom observation yung kailangan niyo para ma-provide na MOV ninyo. In year 2, ganun pa rin, first, second, third, and fourth quarter. Then mentoring, differentiated supervision, and one formal classroom observation. Gagawin nyo yan from the first to fourth quarter. And sa so year 3, ang mangyayari ay isang formal classroom observation na lang and mentoring. At dito na rin natin matatapos ang ating TIP. Nag-graduate na kayo, yung sinabi kanina ni Sir Alvarez. Bibigyan na kayo ng Certificate of Completion. So, yun ang implementation ng ating TIP. That's the end. Uh, that is the content of the Deped Order Number 43 Series of 2017. And for the further information na ibibigay ko, ano nga ba yung content of your portfolio? Kasi at the end, hindi kayo mabibigyan ng Certificate of Completion kung hindi kayo makagawa ng portfolio. So, nakapaloob dito yung cover page. Okay. Dapat merong logo ng Davao City Division, School, and Cluster. Page 1, yung approval, approval sheet. Preface, table of content. From module 1 to module 6. Yung pre-test, post-test, at saka yung reflection. Ilalagay nyo yan sa inyong portfolio. 
And then last part is the analytical rubrics for learning, analytical rubrics for portfolio, classroom observation tools, lesson plan, personal data sheet, or personal description form, and the documentation. So, ito yung mga nakapaloob sa inyong portfolio. O ito yung mga laman na ilalagay din sa inyong portfolio. So, expectation. Expectations. Itong spelling. Uh, kaya bang gawin? Dahil ngayong taon, late na tayo, fourth quarter na, pero umpisahan natin ang year one ng ating TIP. May mga sample designs pala ako dito. Ito yung cover page. Sample lang ito at pwede natin i-enhance at babaguhin. And then, ring bind. Ito yung halimbawa ng approval sheet. Yung introduction. are very much willing to help you accomplish the outputs as you can see presented by Mom G kung gaano kakapal yung portfolio na kailangan nyo tapusin maging officially part na talaga at maging family na talaga ng Santa Ana National High School. Okay, thank you very much Mom G for the clear discussion of the policy or the Deputy Order 47 series of 2017. To our duty hard teachers the inductees of this program, are you ready to discover and learn all the modules of the TIP? Hmm, I think your answer is yes. So, what are we waiting for? Let us have a walkthrough of the TIP modules to begin with the Module 1. This module is all about the mandate, vision, mission, core values, and strategic directions the depth and organizational structure and school processes. We also have the teaching as a profession and as a vocation. The PPSTA, career path within the Department of Education, the Magna Carta, the Code of Ethics, the RPMS that we are doing right now, the salaries, wages, and benefits of the teachers. And these topics will be discussed to us by this beautiful presenters of English department. Our first presenter is the head teacher 3 of the said department, Mrs. Josely Saluko, followed by the uh, followed by the second presenter, Mrs. Jessamay Moises, master teacher 2, followed by Mrs. Elenita Boston, master teacher 1. And the module will be ended by the last presenter, Mrs. Judith Muskete, the Master Teacher 2 of English Department. Now, let us hear the discussion of Mrs. Josely Salukop. A warm virtual applause coming from all of us. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your new home, which is the DepEd, and more particularly, the Santa Ana National High School. As new teachers, you should undergo this program, which is the Teachers in Action program, so that you will not be groping in the dark on what to do and what to expect, and vice versa, what are the things that are expected from you. Let's start with the Module 1. Session 1, Mandate vision, mission, core values, and strategic directions. All of us should understand this DepEd mandate and its learner-centered philosophy of education. And what is this DepEd mandate? It is the right of all citizens to quality education 
and to make education accessible to all. As teachers, we should have a reservoir of varied teaching strategies to meet the different needs of our learners as aligned to DepEd's learner-centered philosophy. The DepEd is the institution put in charge to implement all the programs to all educational institutions and all its programs like the junior high school, senior high school, MWSP, public and private school towards the realization of the goals of this government. We as teachers are the ones responsible in fulfilling those dreams. As public school teachers, we are mandated to inculcate values and develop the necessary competencies deemed necessary and desirable to ensure a lifelong learning. The outcome of our student translates our commitment on how we mold them, how they will become as best citizens of our country, that somehow they will become assets of our nation someday. Bear in mind that our most important stakeholder is our learner. Without them, we also don't have jobs to do. So, we better serve them the best as we can as educators. This is our DepEd mission, to protect and promote the right of every Filipino to quality, equitable, culture-based, and complete basic education. To achieve this, we should create an environment which is child-friendly, grader-sensitive, and safe for all learners. Our core values is makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. We should always practice these values in our daily dealings. Number two, DepEd organizational structure and school processes. This aims to equip new teachers to know and understand school policies and procedures to foster harmonious relations with the wider school community. That later on, when you will become proficient teachers, you can comply and implement those policies. As they say that we will learn through our experiences in school, as long as we imbibe all the learning that we can pick along the path of our journey as educators. Let us just be informed of this Republic Act 9155, the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2021. Of, okay, excuse me, Basic Education Act of 2001. This is establishing the DepEd as the authority and accountable of all the programs from the national office down to the field. Number three, teaching as a profession and as a vocation. As teachers, it is our duty to keep on upgrading ourselves. Thus, continuous personal growth and development is one of our priorities as professionals. We should also demonstrate behaviors that uphold the dignity of teaching as a profession by exhibiting qualities such as caring attitude. I don't care attitude is a no-no. Respect. Respect one another. Always greet people inside the school campus. Since you are still new and don't know everybody, and added with this situation that you can hardly know all your co-workers, to be safe, just be nice and respectful to everybody. Next is integrity. Just remember that we are being looked up to as teachers. 
in which were considered persons belonging to a noble profession. We are always put in the pedestal. We play a vital role in the lives of our students and considered the modern day heroes. So, we should live in honesty, with honor, and reliab reliability. But first and foremost, before we are qualified to be called professional teachers, we should have a license, and that is, we must have passed the licensure examination for teachers. And we should abide by the code of ethics for the professionals until the day we retire. Just keep in mind that teaching is not just a profession but also a vocation in which our dedication and commitment is always at stake. Thank you and good day. This time, let us hear another center to deliver her topic, the part of our Module 1 and other than Mom Jessamy Moises. A round of applause, please. To all the Yes, I'm just. Thirty two years ago, when I joined Santa Ana National High School, there were no such program as the teachers in the national program. I only had one hour orientation to the people in the best program for its relatives. To be in that, we were very lucky because this program did not go further or finer than on the level or of teaching the various things, especially during this pandemic time where there is no face-to-face instructions and teachers play a crucial role in improving the quality of teaching and learning process. Hence, enhancing teaching quality runs purpose in the many educational reform efforts towards quality education. As a mentor in one of the presenters on this EIP orientation, I am tasked to present Module 1, Sections 4, 5, and 6. To be honest, I refused to accept this call when this was evident to run and informed me to a messenger because of some mental problems. But because of commitment and dedication to work, I took the task with the help of my dear colleague, the master teacher, Division Motor Writer and Test Mrs. Elenita C. Stone. She will present to you the topics of positions 4, 5, and 6 and what the inductors are expected to do. With great heart, I introduce to you now Mrs. Elenita C. Stone for Module 1, positions 4, 5, and Month. And I think everyone is ready to hear the discussion of our third presenter of Module 1. She is, again, a master teacher, one of English department, none other than Mom Elenita C. Boston. Take it away, Mom Ellen. So, on behalf of Mrs. Moises' request, I will read Module 1. Session 4, 5, and 6. Okay, next slide. Okay, session 4 is Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, and this is what's called PPST. Okay, next. Okay, so letter A desired learning outcome. So, learning outcomes are seven domains of PPST. Then, the strand is 37 strands of PPST for beginning and efficient teachers. For beginning teacher, teachers, understand the set of standards that make explicit what teachers should do, should know, to be able to do and, uh, and value to achieve competence, improve learning outcomes, and eventually quality education. 
and pro for proficient teacher adopt principle practices that demonstrates understanding of the PPSP. Here are the objectives. Letter A, familiarize and discuss the seven domains and the different career stages of the PPSP in realizing one's professional goals. Letter B, demonstrate understanding on the PPSP and its impact to the realization of one's professional practice and goals. Letter C, design an individual professional development plan based on the PPSP and individual performance commitment and review or the IPCR intended to realize the professional de development plans. Okay, so this is the pre-test. Okay, so you are going to analyze each item whether it is true or false. Okay, so a letter D, the glossary of terms. So there are terms that are being defined in glossary. So you can look at it, the meaning of it from the glossary. Okay, next, key concepts. Okay, so letter E is the key concepts. I am, I am not going to read this one anyway. These are found in your module once you started your um, PIP. Okay, next. Then letter F are the activities and assessment. You have set of activities. Letter A is map me. Letter B is read. Letter C is what I learned. D, what I do. And E, what I realize. Okay, next. Okay, the next one is reflection. So in reflection, you are given a situation. As a teacher, what are the indication under beginning stage that you can do? Is it possible that you can move to the higher career stage? Knowing where you are, what professional development goals would you prepare based on your strength and areas for improvement? So this is the uh, task for the situation in your reflection. Okay, next. So, uh, it is followed by the post-test. So, the same uh, uh, way of answering the pre-test, you are going to analyze its item, whether it, it is true or false. Okay, next. Then, we are now in session 5. Session 5 is career path within Department of Education. Okay, so letter A. Decide learning outcome for beginning teacher and proficient teacher. Do, uh, seven, uh, the domain seven is personal growth and professional development. It is the has a strand of professional development goals. For beginning teacher, show motivation to realize professional development goals based on the PPSD and for Proficient teacher set professional development goals based on the PPSD. So in the beginning, you are going to show and then in the uh, proficient, you are going to set to make your own development plan and uh, it should be anchored to the PPSD. Okay, next. Objectives. Letter A, determine the career stages based on the PPSD. Letter B, assess the personal teaching practices based on the PPSD. Letter C, prepare a road map to serve as the career path in the depth and journey of begin beginning teacher. Okay, next. Then it is followed by the pre-test. Okay, the next, the key concepts. Okay, next. Then the glossary of terms. Okay. Then, set of activities wherein you are going to uh, just study the table and answer the question being asked. Okay, next. Then, the reflection. So, in your reflection, choose one or uh, one of the two writing prompts to write a well-developed response in paragraph 4. Okay, the, uh, you are provided with two, uh, say, writing prompts and then you just choose one. Okay, next. Then followed by the post-test, 
Okay. Then, next. Then, we are now in the session 6 for Magna Carta for public school teachers. Okay. So, the desired learning outcome. Beginning teacher and the proficient teacher. Domain 6, community linkages and professional engagement. The strand is professional ethics. Then for beginning teacher, be aware of exist existing laws and regulations that apply to the teaching profession. And then for proficient teacher, regularly review personal teaching practices using existing laws and regulations that apply to the teaching profession. Objectives. The objectives are Demonstrate awareness on the Magna Carta of public school teachers in basic education and your professional rights, opportunities, benefits, and responsibilities. Then let B, reflect on the personal teaching practice in relation to the relevant provisions of the Magna Carta. Then let C, write a commitment on how you will perform your rights and responsibilities guided by the Magna Carta. Okay, next. Then, after the objectives, you are you have this we test again. So you are going to fill in the blanks with the correct answer. Okay, the next. So followed by the key concepts. Okay, then next. Then set of activities again. So you're going to uh, say answer them uh, with with your with uh commitment on how you must uh, say based on your profession you have to answer it uh, say uh, heartily based on your experiences as beginning as uh, as a teacher so next reflection and in your reflection in the department of education we are sudden to hear news this is now the scenario given in your reflection and you are going to uh, answer this so all the reflections given are somewhat provoking. So this is a situation in the Department of Education. We are sudden to hear news of malpractices of teachers in the profession. Let us uplift ourselves and our profession. Write your commitment to complete the paragraph below. As a member of the Deep Ed Learning Community, I commit myself to help realize the Deep Ed mission and vision. So I promise to. So you are going to continue. Okay, so next. So you have again the post test. So it is uh, fill in the blanks again. Okay, so that's all. So what I am giving you, I am just reading just to orient you what is the content in module one, session four, five, and six. So teachers, good afternoon. Thank you. Okay, by the way, we still have our uh, last presenter of module yes, one. I'm so yes, sorry, Mom Judith Muscati. And by the way, Mom Judith is the Master Teacher 2 of English Department and the last presenter of Module 1. And he will, she will be discussing the last part of our Module 1, so take it away, Mom Judith. Okay, uh, to my co-mentors and to the 96 uh, mentees around and to everybody watching us via uh, stream, StreamYard, good afternoon. Today marks the beginning of another uh, milestone in the career of our newly hired teachers here in Santa Ana National High School as this TIP is being uh, mobilized again to prepare our mentees to become empowered teachers imbued with passion, pride, and commitment and eventually become our future, our future leaders in the field. I say our because someday if you soar high, you will be Santa Ana's pride. Okay, and without much ado, may I present to you the contents of uh, Session 7 to 9, Module 1. To start off, uh, Session 7 is entitled Code of Ethics, and that from the term alone, you will be reading, in your readings, you will, you will encounter the words uh, professional ethics, professional standards, and then um, our own our own responsibilities and accountabilities and as ma'am Gustan said uh, there are nine um, key stages of every session from modules one to six and these are 
required learning outcomes, and then uh, objectives, pretests, glossary of terms, key concepts, activities and assessments, reflection, post-test, and appendix or appendices. Okay, may I just uh, emphasize here, Mendes, that under desired learning outcomes, we have different domains, particularly for that session. So, for example, in desired learning outcomes, we have your domain six, community linkages and professional engagement. And the strands are professional ethics, dignity of teaching as a profession. Okay, and then on the next slide, you will see the desired learning outcomes. This was even mentioned by Nam Buston that there are two uh, categories here, uh, beginning teacher, proficient teacher. But as far as I could remember, DepEd uh, considers everyone, even if they are really hard, as proficient teacher. Okay, maybe the beginning teacher here is just being uh, delineated because you are inducted to this program. Okay, but take note that under beginning teacher, you have one, uh, you have, for example, there is a delineation between the beginning teacher's role insofar as this uh, this session is concerned. Example, beware of existing laws and regulations. But in the proficient teacher, you, you are to regularly review personal teaching practices using existing laws and regulations. So these things are the things that you need to understand. Desired learning outcomes, I only picked uh, one here. But there are a lot of learning outcomes listed in, the, in sessions, in every session. Okay, in the next slide, you will see objectives. And I highlighted important words here like responsibilities, day-to-day -day performance or tasks, responsive uh, and professional behavior. Now, for example, in letter A, demonstrate understanding of key provisions of the code of ethics in terms of our responsibilities, in terms of the way we carry out our performance tasks uh, in, in every year, uh, in every year, in every school year that we are in. For the next uh, key part, uh, there are nine key parts kasi of, of every session. The third one is the pretest. Now, I, I picked one sample of the pretest here because this in, in session seven, uh, it's more of case uh, analysis. In our in our case, in our students, we craft questions which are not just rote memory. They are not just a simple recall, but we they we we train them be critical thinkers so therefore teachers and in, in the TIP you, you also have to read a lot like the provisions and the code of ethics and that from the code the provisions in the code you will be able to analyze uh, scenarios like this for example Miss Reyes is a new teacher like you during her first few weeks in school she felt like quitting teaching at the end of totally burned out if you were in her place from who you will ask assistance is it from sir alvarez from the parents or from the teachers this is one example of the pretest one of the examples of the pretest in the code of ethics session seven and then you are confronted with glossary of terms take no teachers that the terms are plenty we only i only pick out few and then for example, that the, the word teacher here is defined and then take note, it's defined on the other side. But at the bottom, there are citations on the, maybe, probably you are given another citations for you to do more readings on your own. Like for example, the teacher is defined as a person who facilitates learners to gain knowledge, skills, and values that enhance development. And the, this definition is taken from RA9155. That is governance of basic education. And then if you want to, you can read RA9155. Then we go to key concepts. These so are a few samples of key concepts about code of ethics and then uh, what else? Conditions and provisions in the code of ethics. Then we go to activities and assessments. Under activities and assessment, you are given self-reflect reflection type of assessment and activities. So teachers, if we do collab with our uh, co-teachers in the department, of course, when we call up, uh, you share answers. But please do rephrase, reword the call up break because I know we are bombarded with so many things. But please do, if it's self-reflection, then it's yours. It has to be your own. Okay? If the others are not, if the other uh, items do not call for self-reflection, 
and then maybe just paragraphs and all, you can call up, but please rephrase and reword it because the cluster will need all your outputs. And then, gaya nito, self-reflection. I realize that teacher's personality, teacher, teacher as role model. And then, another activity is under sec, uh, session 7 is a case type 1. For example, like this one, in this the case of Sir Antonio, uh, Sir Antonio Baguio. And uh, he received a complaint from the guardian of one of his students regarding the grade of his daughter in English. Mr. Baguio listened to the complaint of the guardian with sympathy and referred it to the teacher concerned for clarification. Now, what is asked of you here? You are to cite the site article in the code of ethics then provision statement on the code of ethics then you have to explain is the, the action of mr bad okay but before you can answer this dear mentees you must be reading you must you must have read uh, the the and that is the code of ethics for professional teachers then you will be confronted with the uh, Commitment here, you will sign, you read and you'll sign. And then reflections. Again, in the reflection is under under reflections, you have a lot of situational uh, scenarios. And you have to explain them. Okay? And then you have the post test. As I've said, it is MCQ, multiple choice, but then there are analysis to the pre-test and the post test. Like the ones we give to our students. We, we want them to be critical thinkers, so therefore, also, we must do the same. And the last one is the appendix on the Code of Ethics. So, we read this first before answering all the activities. Now, we move to, uh, okay, Th there are a few provisions under the Code of Ethics that I lifted. For example, uh, the idea on schools are nurseries and teachers are trustees. Uh, the concept on local parentis is embedded here. Okay, makita natin sa Code of Ethics. Number two, teachers right to seek redress against injustice. If you feel that you have you were not given the promotion, and then you can seek the redress. Okay? Why? In a proper forum. And it is embedded in the Code of Ethics. And number three, teachers right to invoke principal appointments, promotions, and transfers. Say for example, if you want to transfer after five years, you want to transfer to Palomo because you are nearby Palomo, living nearby Palomo, then on what merit will you be given the transfer of uh, of workplace? Okay, nakan ethics. Or number four, right, to due process. For example, if you're if the principal recommends you for dismissal of of work and of tenure like that so and if you, f you feel that there is a due process on that then you can fight for your right another one is accepting favors or gifts from learners from parents etc are we allowed to do that another thing remuneration from tutorials are we allowed to accept uh, monetary considerations from tutorials in our in, in Santa Ana, okay? uh, those things are encoded in the Code of Ethics. Another one, very exciting in number seven. For example, a situation where mutual attraction and subsequent love develop between teacher and learner. Oh, are we allowed to be in love? To what extent? Like that. And number eight, inflicting corporal punishment. Inflicting corporal punishment is really a known one. Okay, we know that. Teacher number nine, Engaging in business, number 10, and still engaging in business related to textbooks and other commodities. And the last one is about teachers respect to financial matters like settlement of debts and loans. are just a few examples under the provisions of code of ethics. Now, session 8 is RPMS. I will not delve more on the RPMS because I discussed RPMS last March 15, the first day of. Um, our emperor last March. But I will just reiterate the picture that I attached here is our picture about this one is, uh, is the cycle of the RPMS. And since we are towards the end of the RPMS cycle, then therefore I I hope and I know that uh, your MPs have guided you all throughout the cycles of the RPMS because at the end of the year you will not just be doing the RPMS portfolio you'll also be doing the TIP portfolio as mentioned by Mamchi. okay now 
uh, in this session eight, there is no appendix about uh, RPMS. So if you if you want to know about the RPMS, you can download the, ma the manual, the manual in time of COVID-19. But then the manual is too thick, so you just have to read this one. Uh, this is the abridged part of the contents of the RPMS insofar as new normal is concerned. This is the memorandum issued by under Secretary Mateo, dated January 11, 2021. You can, this is just 28 pages, and you can just read all, all things about RPMS tools, COTs, timelines, and protocols are there. This is the abridged part, I said. Ponte uh, rather than reading the entire manual. It's too thick as this. Okay, we go to IPCRF portfolio. This is the thing that you will be needing at the end of the year. TIP part, uh, TRP, a mo Modules are also synced with IP, R, IPCRF and RPMS. And take note of the changes in KRA2. Like this one, in KRA2, you have diversity of learners and assessment and reporting at the same time. No longer in KRA4. Because last year, we have assessment and reporting in KRA4. Now, in KRA4, we have community linkages and PE, what we may be, professional engagement, professional growth, and professional development. Okay, then next one, that's the manual. And the caveat here is that I think this was mentioned by Mam G that you need to have four classroom observations, even if, say, for example, you have been, ana, promote naman talaga ako. I've been promoted, I've been in Santa Ana for quite some time already. Six years na baya, we don't have the TIP still. Since you are enrolled in the TIP, you go through the four COs. Okay, to be attached in the IPCRF. Then we go to, okay, I, I want you to take notice of this thing. I outlined this for you for uh, for session eight. You need, before you answer the activities, you need a developmental plan. This one was mentioned by Mam G a while ago, but we answered, by the way, we answered the uh, de developmental plan in the LDM part last December. But then that time we don't have the ESAT yet. The ESAP and the DP will always go together. So therefore, we go to the DP that was made last March or last February. We answered the ESAP and we look into the ESAP result and we, we need to find out which are our strengths and weaknesses and therefore we go to that. We go, we use those data for our dev plan. And then for session eight, again, highlighted areas are classroom management, professional development, community development. And then number of COPs, as I've said, apart. And then quarterly reports, all other reports that we are doing, like the ECRs, the P plus record, the GSAs, the prof levels, the list learns, the item analysis in Q4 and Q, Q3 and Q4, all these things are, are part of the IPCRF, part of uh, your M. And we go to our data session nine salaries and wages and benefits of teachers. This is exciting, right? Because we know, but when I read the contents, the salaries are not uh, explained so well, and there are new, new uh, memos about salaries, and so you have to read them on your own. Uh, because we are, you are enrolled in the TIP, so you are now students. So you have to read new salary updates and wages and benefits now. The same, you have nine stages in there. The domain and the sun is different, okay? Like that one. And then the pretest, take note of the pretest. They're already simple recall, like RN 4670, uh, teachers leave with pay, special leave with pay, proportional vacation pay, and all these things. All these things can be read under D and E, under key concepts and vocab. All inputs are there not in the appendix. Now, what are these in inputs about trainings? For example, you will be sent by Sir Ruel abroad for a training. What are the things that you need to accomplish? What are the, the agreement, okay? What are the things that you need to comply? And then for study grants, for example, I was granted a study grant when I was at the age, of, when I, that was 20, 20, uh, more than, more than 10 years ago. Okay. That this is a local grant, okay? but there were young people together with us. Oh, I was already 40 that time. Okay, uh, there were young. Uh, they were just in the system for two years. But why were they granted? Because of this, uh, of this uh, provisions. 
Can we go to privileges or privileges in the in this uh, session? And then entitlements and benefits like the PBB, the ACA. There was a mention of the RATA here, but I think the RATA, we are not entitled with the RATA because we're not traveling. Uh, travel allowance menu. Uh, the supervisors are are having the RATA maybe. And then what else? PI, uh, allowance, and all this thing. And dito sa DNE. You just have to read them if they are quite outdated. And then you have to read them because you will be reading and doing a lot of things. And I think that's the end of my talk. Thank you for saying yes to continuous learning. I think our Model 2 presenters are ready. And I want to walk through what are the topics inside the Module 2. We are done with the Module 1 and let us proceed immediately with our Module 2. This module is all about the self-awareness, self-mastery, and teachers' agency, personal and professional development, we also have the financial literacy, health and wellness program. Oh, I love this one. Health and wellness program. And of course, the gender and development or the GAD. With the following presenters, Mrs. Emerita B. Poha, the head teacher for of DLE department. Together with her are the following master teachers, two of the respective department. We have Mr. Magdalen Baldrick of ESP department and Mrs. Richelle Laboy of Mathematics Department. While waiting. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to our principal. Good afternoon to the master teachers, the teachers, and also our respective mentors. This afternoon is a very important event for you to have the orientation. Is to let you know that the teacher have to go along with their path and they have to go and enjoy their teaching profession. My task this afternoon is to share you about Module 2. Module 2, the Filipino teacher, is composed of five sessions. Session 1, the self-awareness, session two, professional development, session three, financial literacy, session four, health and wellness, and then session five, gender and development. The first session for what you do is pertaining to self-awareness. But before we go through, let me share to you this Life is a compromise between your feelings and reality. At every stage of your life, your feeling is to accept the reality. Okay. So, self-awareness. What is self-awareness? We are expecting the desired learning outcomes for this topic. One, we should know the indicators for the beginning teacher. Beginning teachers should understand how professional reflection and learning can be used to improve practice. While we also want to know proficient teachers indicators. What is it? You have to develop a personal professional improvement plan based on reflection of one's practice and ongoing professional learning. Okay, that is our desired outcome. What are our objectives? Our objectives is to understand personal awareness, self-mastery, and teacher agency in relation to improving teacher, teacher practice. Second objective is to identify your personal strength and weaknesses to strengthen or improve teaching practice. The third is apply results of your self-inventory to develop, implement, and track progress of your personal improvement plan. Our key concept is the self-awareness. What is it? You have the self-awareness is being conscious of what is good in you and acknowledge what is still to be learned. Simply, 
may mga kakalang pa tayo dito. Next is, you have conscious knowledge about your oneself, about one's belief, assumption, organizing principles, and structures of feelings. Self-awareness also tries to turn directly related to both emotional, intelligence, and success. It also creates achievable goals. Guide yourself down the right path. It also makes you identify satisfaction, anticipate our own reaction. It also allows us to make positive behavioral changes that can lead to greater personal and professional success. In one way or the other, self-awareness also develops your values that will serve as framework that guide you on how to interpret your experiences so that you can decide an appropriate action to take. Okay, the next part is you have the assessment. You have to discover yourself, how to become a better me. And then another one, you have to assess yourself, how you are emotionally mature. The third assessment is you have to build self-awareness. And then the fourth is you're going to discover me and others. Ikaw at ang iba. Marunong ka ba? Next, you have to discover also the leader in me. Ang teacher ba ay pwedeng maging leader? Or hindi ka marunong maging leader? Next also is you are going to assist yourself how to develop self-mastery. And then, the next part of session one is my personal professional improvement plan. Do you plan, teacher? Wala lang. You have to plan plans to improve com competence and career as a teacher and a teacher leader. Okay, how to plan your plans? You must have professional goals. You have time frame. You have the strength. You have the weaknesses, and then you try to put some remarks on your plan. In the pending plan, then you have to work your plan as well. Okay, then we have the session two. It is pertaining to personal, professional development. What is our expectation in this session? So, our learning outcomes is to understand how professional reflection and learning can be used to improve practice. Second, we have to develop a personal professional improvement, a plan that is based on reflection of your practice and ongoing professional learning. What is our object in this session? One, we are going to assess the clear behavioral competence for personal development. Second objective is to prepare and implement individual professional plan, including collaborative activities. The third is, we are going to evaluate your improvement in teaching practice as a result of your self-assessment for personal and professional development. Okay, in this session, we have some important terms. One, you have the behavioral competence. You must be familiar with this so that you will know how to observe the measurable and behavior for individual and organizational effectiveness. Second important term is the teacher's strength and need analysis. It is a self-assessment tool designed to identify the strength and needs of teachers. The third term that is very important is the Individual Professional Plan for Development or the IPP, a tool that serves as a guide for the teacher for positive learning and development as a professional. This will serve as your guide as you go along with your path. Okay, then the next is our K concept. So this is the most important one. So it is said that one, the self-assessment and evaluation as a teacher. Kailangan talaga, no? you must always examine yourself. Second, 
The TSMA is essential in the provision of quality professional development. That is the teacher's need. Which part you are weak and which part to help the strength. Next is the IPPD. As we all know, it is a tool that serves as a guide for the teachers for possible learning and development as a professional. IPPD also is being accomplished by the teacher to enable them to chart their goals and plan learning activities to enhance their professional competences in order for them to work better for improvement of their school and learner performance. Okay, the last activity we have is the activities and assessment wherein you are going to examine your domain and there are some guide questions. The first domain is the social regard and learning. The sample question here, here is, do you demonstrate value for learning? So as a teacher, you must try to inculcate values or something. Second domain is the learning environment. Are we conscious? Conscious ba tayo sa actual? So the guide question here is, do you make the classroom environment safe and conducive to learning? Baka pupunta lang kayo, susulat, lecture, walang pakialam sa paligid. So that is not a correct one. That is not a correct practice. You must be concerned also with your environment. The third domain is the diversity of learners. So as a teacher, you must know, you have to determine, understand and accept the learner's diverse background, knowledge, and experience. No? Dahil we belong to the different different cultures or may iba't ibang pinagmumula ng ating mga mag-aaral. The third domain is the curriculum. Do you make good use of allotted instructional time or do you dismiss before the time? Next domain is the planning, assessing, and reporting. So the question here is do you develop and utilize creative and appropriate instructional plan. O bukis ka lang, wala kang mga additional learning materials. Next is, we need to have the community linkages. Do you establish learning environment that responds to the aspiration of the community? So we must try to have the link. Next, the last domain is personal and personal growth and professional development. So the sample question here is, do you build professional link with colleagues to enrich teaching practice? So, after that assessment, you have some guide questions that will be part of your reflection. So what are the domain where your strengths lie? The second question is, what are the domain where your weakness lie? Third is, how will improve or sustain your self-reads? That is the three questions that will be that will serve as your reflection. The last part is the planning. Okay? So as teacher, we must know how to plan. Based on the weaknesses you have identified on the self-assessment conducted and validated by your colleagues and mentor. Prepare a plan of professional development using this template. So, we have a sample template here, the teacher individual plan for professional development or the IPP. So, you have there the name of teacher, what school year, what is beyond the school. And then, you must have the objectives, you have the methods, resources, time frame, and the success indicator. So, Makikita nyo yan more on your modules, no? So, read more on your modules. So, that is sample, that is a sample of planning in your IPPD. So, that's all I can share in module 2, part uh, session 1 and 2. So, remember, as we all know, teacher is a best planner, but do not just plan, work your plan. Thank you. Good morning, fellow teachers. I will be discussing financial literacy. 
yours truly, Magdelon P. Baldrick, Master Teacher 2 of Santa Ana National High School, ESP Department. Financial Literacy It is important to us teachers to know, understand, and practice financial literacy. Our objectives are, first, identify principles of financial literacy and its importance in improving personal practices. Second, analyze by charting one's own financial standing by creating a table and graphs showing cash flows, which is income versus expenditures. Third, use the cash flow charts in charting one's financial success. Fourth, determine ways of achieving financial success. Fifth, write an essay or good financial practices and those which should be avoided to improve personal management of finances. Sixth, apply the principles of financial literacy in making personal financial development plan. Seven, document in a portfolio personal ways to improve practices in financial management. We have our terminologies. First, financial literacy. It is one's awareness and ability in managing finances, makes responsible and effective decisions in the flow of finances. Next, income. It is the amount earned from one or many resources. Third, expenses. The amount spent on anything. Debt. The amount of things owned from individual or institution. Savings. The amount set aside and kept for whatever financial goal. Budgeting, the breaking down of income into different expenses and savings. And the last, the cash flow. A list of tables showing income and expenditures. We have what we call the pretest, which is the current financial situation. Before we proceed with the lesson, you will assess your current financial situation. This assessment tool will help you determine your status and help you improve your personal financial management. This assessment is exempted from Money Management International ebook on financial literacy. Your 30-step path to financial wellness. This table consists of daily and monthly savings and expenditures. We have the table here, which you will just check always, sometimes, and never. So, the financial practices are, first, pay the rent, mortgage, payment, and utility bills on time. Second, save at least 10% of your net income. Third, keep three months net income in reserve for emergencies. Fourth, plan ahead for large expenses. Fifth, set and keep financial goals. Seven, follow a budget. Regularly review your credit report. Nine, examine your checking account statement often. And ten, continue your financial education. Scoring, add your points using this system. Always, you have two points. Sometimes, one point. Never, zero. So, if you add all your points, these are your analysis. 0 to 10 points indicates a need to take control of your finances. 11 to 15 reflects a good effort to manage your money effectively. 16 to 20 points demonstrate ability to manage your finances successfully. You can write down your realization. So we have the key concepts. First, how can you live within your income? Keep away from chronic debt. Based on the result of your assessment, you can now reflect on your financial situation. As a teacher, be aware that banks and other loan institutions would love to offer you loans. Not only that, there will also be individuals who would sell would sell you products through cash or credit they all sounds tempting be careful 
So, before they will get you, navigate your ways into this lesson to learn more about how to become financially literate. First stop, let go to know the finances through making appropriate decisions on spending, budgeting, savings, investing, and planning. Third concept, why is it important to be financially literate? It is important. So the kind of life you live depends on the way you handle your finances. This means that with financial literacy, you will be able to live within your budget to avoid chronic debts and other financial issues. Aside from that, you can effectively handle your income, expenses, and debts. Fourth key concept, how do you make sense of your money? As a teacher, you are excited to receive your salary because you would like to share your blessings and reward yourself. Sometimes, you don't keep track on your spending tasks, you end up short of budget and eventually result to loans. According to the Institute of Financial Literacy, in the ebook of Making Sense of Your Money, there are things that you need to consider and do make sense of your financial resources. First, set financial goals. Financial goals are to be set first. Identify your financial direction. Goals can be short-term or long-term, depending on you. Goals have to be smart. So smart means first S is what you call specific. Your goal should state clearly what you will do and how you will do it. Otherwise, you won't be able to focus your effort or feel truly motivated to achieve it. M means measurable. These have to be measurable for easy progress, monitor, monitoring, or for taking action if you are not on the right track. A and R are attainable and realistic. Your goals must also be based on your current financial status. Goals should require you discipline for you to stick to the plan. T. Time bound. Goals require time frame. This will set also your direction and keep you away from procrastination and from the pitfall of debts. It is about paying off loans and anything borrowed, especially with interest. You must set a target before or on the due date to avoid additional interest. B. Be motivated by compounded interest. It refers to an interest gaining interest, meaning your earned interest value will increase in monthly or annual basis depending on the institution where you save your money. Then it is your friend if it is your savings or investment interest, but it is your greatest enemy if it is a debt increase. And here is a suggested formula to ensure that you will really be able to save and gain compounded interest, which is income minus savings equals expenses. C. Track your cash flow. This first, this first essential step in achieving your financial goal is understanding one's own financial cash flow or monitoring your savings and expenditure. D. Develop spending plan. Taking control of your financial situation can be done through setting up a spending or budget plan. Do it, do it today before money will make control of you. You may take note of these signs of overspending. 1. Use of savings to pay bills. Delayed payments of bills. Decrease of monthly savings with the same income. Increase of expenses with the same income. More monthly loan payments against monthly income. E. Choose easy ways of budgeting. There are ways to make your budget, budgeting easier. First, envelope system. 
use an envelope in separating your budget for different expenses. Second, written record system. Use the template suggested above. Use the written record system. Use the template suggested above or a simple list of budget for tracking down the different expenses. Third, electronic system. Similar to the written record system, but can only be done using your mobile phone application or computer. Fourth, three bank account system. Open three bank account system for different purposes. First purpose, normal savings account for day-to-day -day banking transactions, where you may get your daily expenses. Second bank account, emergency savings account for emergency purposes which means you only have to withdraw when it is an absolute necessity. And the third, long-term savings account for retirement or for children's education. Next is F, stretch your money. Be wise consumer. Buying sales items does not mean you are wise, but only when you thought, when you bought it because it's necessary. Necessary means you can survive without it or you don't have any alternative available. Be thrifty. Being thrifty is different from being miser. It comes with being a wiser consumer. G. Focus on needs, not wants. There is a need to differentiate needs from wants. It is only then that you can prioritize and decide whether you will buy or not. Do you get into debt? Chikitan, in his book, Till Debt, Do Us Part, identified four roots of debts. So the first root is being greed. The, dis the greed, uh, the desire to have everything you want, whatever it takes. Next, ignorance. Practices on spending your finances and on getting credit from an institution without checking on its terms and conditions. Third, impulsiveness. Buying things even if you don't actually need them. You tend to be lured by the sales on department stores thinking that you save, but actually you don't because it's not necessity. Your money then was put to waste. This also speaks about being impatient or getting something for example, you like to have a new cell phone, but instead of saving for six months to buy a new one, you borrow money from someone or from the bank just to have it right there and then. Fourth, self-indulgence. Living on the idea of ratifying yourself without thinking that you did, without thinking that what you did put out money on unnecessary expenses, it is good to gratify yourself, but you need to look at your budget if it would still be allowed. Six, what are the bad money habits that you need to avoid or break? According to the article written by Alexa Mason, there are 10 bad money habits that need to be avoided. First, spending more than you earn. This is considered as a cardinal sin in personal finances. This will lead you into debt troubles. For example, you will spend more than what you earn. You will, re you will rely on credit to pay the excess of your expenses. Thus, this will make you trapped by debts. Second, relying on your credit to pay your bills. Why pay bills for electricity, whatever or other basic needs through credit? if you have the income. There are times when you need to pay mortgages or education expenses, low credit. If you do, you need to put extra care and planning to meet your basic needs without resorting to credit. Next, taking out payday loan. There might be cases that you need succumb to payday loan. There might be cases that you need succumb to payday loan because you don't have savings for emergency. Remember, loans have interest, and worst of it, 
it is compounded, meaning interest gaining interest. Next, preparing for an emergency. There are things that might happen that you don't expect or you don't even like to happen. These are called emergencies. How prepared are you for such? Savings is the key. Next, paying your bills late. Paying your bills late in incur additional interest, which means additional expenses. Next, failing to save for the future. You don't know what the future holds. You don't know what comes during your retirement age. It is good to live life every day, but still save for the future. Next, not taking control of your career. You have a good character in that end, but if you miss the but if missed to take control of it, by not taking control of your finances, this good career will become your nightmare. Last but not the least, hoarding money and never having fun. This is what stingly people do. They miss the fun of life because they are afraid to spend. Lighten up, have fun, but spend prudently. Seven. What do you do to achieve financial success? According to George S. Pleason, author of the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, there are seven cures for a learn purse. First, start thy purse to fattening. Allocate 10% of your income for yourself, meaning save the 10% for yourself. This is a way of gratifying yourself for all the job that you do. Control thy expenditure. Do not spend beyond the remainder of your income. Budgeting here is necessary. Make thy gold multiply to make investment. There are a lot of ways to invest your money. You can invest through bank traditional businesses or stock market next guard thy treasure from loss invest only where your money is safe if you if you invest into businesses make sure you know the system in nature of business next make thy dwelling a profitable investment invest only invest on a house that you will own Renting is not a good practice because it would cost you more. Ensure a future income. Plan for your retirement years. Grab or make opportunities to increase your income day to day because you do not know what tomorrow holds because as you age, your energy lessens. And last but not the least, increase the ability to earn. It is a fact that we are all facing financial concern every day. And to be able to deal with them all, it is, necess it is necessary to look for other sources of income, study, and become wiser skillfully. That's all, fellow teachers. I hope that this topic will most of help to all to develop a personal improvement with regards to finances. Thank you and good day. Uh, thank you, Ms. Grelly, Mr. Jopet, thank you. Uh, to our principal, Sir Alvarez, to our OIC admin officer, Ma'am Gino, to all department heads in attendance, to all our mentors and mentees, good afternoon. As we continue with our TIP module 2, entitled uh, there are, by the way, before that, we have five sessions in this module. The first three, I presume and assume it was already given because my topic will be the fourth and the fifth session. So I'll be giving you now the fourth and the fifth session of this module two. Are you ready? Okay, let's start with the fourth session. The fourth session is on health and wellness program. Here are some 
of the inclusions. Decide learning outcome, objectives, pretest, glossary of terms, activities and assessment, reflection, and post-test. Before going further, may I ask you teachers, have you recently heard or read news about teachers? Good. You may share your answer in the chat box if you want. May it positive or negative. Some of the positive issues or news makes us happy, self-motivated. But those negative ones, they are very depressing, heartbreaking, painful, and discouraging. And sometimes you may even think a million of times, is this the job I want? Is this the department I want to be belong? Is this the job I dream of? You know what? Lot of thinking and pondering to do teachers. Because these days, there are teachers who commit suicides. Sometimes go to prisons for drug abuse. And even sometimes there are a lot of uh, teachers out there going into our system just to have money making and making power out of our profession. Most of the negati negative issues are caused by stress. Do you believe that? Let's try. According to the latest poll of education support at YouGov teacher survey posted last March 16, 2021, 8 out of 10 teachers, or let's say 80%, currently describe themselves as stressed from working with over 4 in 10 or 46%, saying that pressures on their mental health and well-being have caused them to consider leaving the profession in this academic year. Really? How about you teachers? Are you one of those 80% or one of the 46%? Can you type? Wow! Most of the teachers in this academic year really got stressed out. Especially with this current educational system or status, the new normal, right? But anyway, Teachers, as they say, teachers have high stress tolerance. Do you agree? Do you have a high tolerance? Really? Yes. yes Drop ma it. Do you have yes, a high tolerance? Yes, yes we have course. a... That was very good. We yes, get today. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Because if not, teachers, as they say, oh, let me say, you have high tolerance. If you don't, I don't think so. You will survive in this career. Why? Because how do you feel your student react to you being stressed inside the classroom? Lucky for us, because this school year, we do not have face-to-face. -face. So, students cannot see us, right? But some say, stress teachers make stress students. Is it true? Agree? Okay. Yes, ma. Agree. Agree talaga, no? Agree. Yes. So, therefore, teachers, we have a vital role in this institution. Teachers need to become always confident so that stress cannot be seen or felt by the students. We must always remember that our job is a noble one. And no one will be rich financially. But we are far more richer than those who have money because we are very rich in heart and in spirit. Do you agree? Yes, because even in the eyes of the world, we may be simply a teacher. You may be a simple teacher or simply a teacher. But to our students, you know what, teachers? We are their heroes. Can you still remember the tagline of our shirt before? in the World Teachers Day. Ano nga yung tagline natin sa Teachers Day? Oh, very good. My teacher, my hero. Are you proud to be one of us? Really? Are you proud you are 
a t-shirt? Yes, I am. Very uh, good. I am. Yes. 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 yes ma. Do, do you really love to teach? Yes. 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 Okay, I have here on the screen some positive thoughts to ponder and some food for our soul. Can you read some? Or can you type some emotion emoji at the chat box? And how do you feel upon reading those quotes or thoughts on the screen? Wow, very good. Some are happy, energized, and satisfied. Let me ask you once again. Do you really need the positive thoughts in our daily endeavor as a teacher? Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, like very good. Different. Yes, very good. In this session, you will also know the importance of maintaining positive health and wellness in order for you to improve your learning and teaching style in the classroom. Here also, you can evaluate your personal health and wellness related practices somewhat like, is it okay to sleep light ev uh, late? Sleep late every night doing ML? What is that ML? Mahala na kayo dyan. Or like, I will accomplish my work on time. In evaluating our personal health and wellness, let us watch and appreciate this video entitled The Eight Dimension of Wellness for us to grow holistically as a person in general. Are you ready to watch? Wellness is an active process of being aware and making choices toward a healthy and fulfilling life. Wellness is more than being free from illness. It's an ongoing process of change and growth. There are eight dimensions of wellness. Emotional, environmental, financial, intellectual, occupational, physical, social, and spiritual. Each dimension of wellness is interconnected with the other and all are equally important in the pursuit of optimal health. One can reach an optimal level by understanding how to maintain and improve each dimension and by creating balance. Understand your feelings. Express them to the people you trust and maintain a positive outlook. It's important to pay attention to self-care, relaxation, stress reduction, and the development of inner resources so you can learn and grow from your experiences. Find surroundings that encourage good physical and mental health, and also where you feel safe. A positive environment has a calming effect. Environmental wellness inspires us to live a lifestyle that is aware and respectful of our surroundings. Make it a point to understand your finances. Money plays a critical role in our lives, and not having enough impacts health as well as academic performance. Establish good financial habits and plan for the future. Be a lifelong learner by expanding your knowledge and finding creative outlets that stimulate your mind and sense of curiosity. Be open to new ideas, insights, and wisdom. Actively participate in scholastic, cultural, and community activities. Look for satisfaction from things you're passionate about, whether they are part of work, school, or volunteering. Find ways to engage in occupational endeavors and feel appreciation for the value of your contributions. Reduce your risk from many illnesses by increasing activity levels according to your abilities. Get restful sleep at night, choose healthy foods, and explore the outdoors to reduce stress and increase energy levels. A sense of belonging and a reliable support system help during difficult times. Make at least one social connection daily. Seek advice from peers or support groups and create healthy friendships. Yeah. 
Enhancing your connections to self, nature, and others brings balance and peace to your life. Disconnect from distractions and be mindful. Discover what values and beliefs are most important to you. Striving to maintain or make small improvements to the eight dimensions of wellness is the key to your overall health. The pursuit of continued growth and balance in the eight dimensions of wellness will lead to a better quality of life. In this module, you will explore each dimension and how nutrition plays a vital role in being the best you. Okay, let's see it, teachers. In the eighth dimension of wellness, my young co workers and to all mentees, let me say this to all of you be well and do well in your new career path. This ends the fourth session of the PIP module 2. Going to the last session, are you familiar with this picture? Can you say what is this? Have you seen this one? Male and female, ma'am. Oh, very good. I love it, Sir Chopet. It is male and Email. Correct. Our last session, we'll discuss or we will be giving us a highlight of gender and development. To start with, gender and development again have the different concepts. So, it involves here in this uh, session, it involves desired learning outcomes, different objectives, Pre-test, glossary of terms, activities and assessment, reflection, and assessment. Again, in addition, you will be guided in this session how to understand more the concepts of sex, gender, gender characteristics, gender role, and other concepts related to gender and development. The different gender biases, the uh, different uh, gender bias practices inside the classroom. So start with, let's have this one. Sex and gender. Are they the same or different? Of course, they are different. How do they differ? I have here simple facts. Sex versus gender. Sex is a biological in nature. Gender is cultural. Sex given by birth. Gender is learned through socialization. Therefore, as simple as it is, sex cannot be changed and gender can be changed. There are some examples below showing the difference between the two. For more differences and example of sex and gender will be given by your mentors later. So mentors will give more examples in this. Another is gender roles. Gender role is also known as sex role, usually centered on the conception of masculinity and femininity. Gender role also influences a wide range of human behavior, often likes how does a person uh, choose clothing or a profession and the like. Gender roles are perpetuated by the following manipulation, canalization, verbal appellations, and activity exposures. For the gender role development, God adopts the principle that development is for all, regardless of men and women. Another one is gender socialization. What is socialization? It is a process where individuals learn the culture of their society. Further, 
discuss, we have some agents or channels of socialization. We have family, school, government, church, media, and peer groups. All these institutions help socialize people and students into their gender roles and help them develop their gender identities. So, one of the agents here in gender socialization is the school. Schools, in most cases, reinforce the existing gender biases, force, ideology, and expectations. Schools also have a big potential in transforming the prevalent notions in relation towards gender sensitivity, especially in this new normal. In the Philippines, or in Philippine education in particular, we have some strategic gender issues to be addressed. What are those? One, boys are underperforming in K education indicators compared to girls. Two or false. Next is indigenous people fall behind enrollment data and experience discrimination. Yes. Another, women and girls continue to be vulnerable to sexual harassment and violence inside schools because of lack of, say, of safe and gender-responsive teaching learning environment. True, gender biases and stereotyping remains are still embedded in curricula, instructional materials, and learning media. These strategic gender issues in deep ed, deep ed institutionalized or there is a big role in deep ed. Deep ed's role in ensuring that the gender-based discrimination or violence must be minimized or not totally eradicated by the school system. We have these guidelines. First, we have the Republic Act 9710. What is this? The instructional goal is to ensure the promotion and protection of dignity and self-worth of both sexes by integrating and or infusing core messages and related values on gender fair education in curricula. Another guidelines to be followed is the Magna Carta of Women Section 13. What is this? It is the equal access elimination of discrimination in education, scholarships, and trainees. In these guidelines, we are protected teachers. We are bound to develop some skills for our learners. What are those skills? We should recognize gender issues. Teach the young children to engage in respectful and emotionally healthy relationships. Create an atmosphere where violence and bullying is not tolerated. Another is empowered young people with useful knowledge, skills, understanding, and promoting positive, non-violent relationship based on quality and respect. There are still a lot of skills to be shared with you by your mentors in your one-on-one -on -one session with them. From the knowledge you will gain in this session and in this module, our dear mentees and co-workers in the academy, we will be more gender sensitive. We will promote and advocate gender equality and gender equity. Again, this is Ms. Richel Mansueto Lavoy, Master Teacher in Mathematics Department, saying thank you for lending your ears and sparing your time and listening. Oh, hi, yung peganda to all. That's all.
Good day, fellow educators. Welcome to Teacher Induction Program, Module 3, the K-12 Curriculum. This is Luz M. Gazzo from the Science Department, your speaker. Before we proceed to the sessions of Module 3, let's refresh ourselves at the Department of Education's goal. It is to reach out all school-age children to be in school to provide quality basic education, recognizing that all children and youth, including those with disabilities, indigenous people, Muslim learners, child laborers in conflict situation, and those that are hardest to reach, has the right to education. With the advent of K-12 basic education program, the Department of Education strengthened the programs, projects, and activities anchored on the long-term goals of inclusive education, which is also aligned to the Sustainable Development Goals, officially known as Transforming Our World. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is set of 17 global goals, wherein Goal 4 speaks on quality education, thus producing globally competitive graduates. Moving on to Session 1, Early Language Literacy and Numeracy. Desired outcomes for this module are the following. Number 1, demonstrate the knowledge of the different strategies that promote literacy and numeracy skills. Second, use of range of teaching strategies that enhance learner achievement and literacy and numeracy skills. In your individual TIP modules, this is followed by objectives for your perusal and understanding, followed by pretest, and then glossary of terms, and the key concepts. Let's focus now on key concepts for us to be able to design teaching strategy that promotes literacy and numeracy skills. First, we should have better understanding on child development because it helps teachers understand the changes we see as students grow and develop, how they think, they feel, and behave. Second, knowing and understanding how children or students learn at different ways or their learning styles for us to be able to design strategy or the best learning experiences that we could provide to students and the teaching strategies that is suited to a particular student. The third one, studying child development helps teachers explain individual variations in the rate of development of their students. And this, that, that will also help us understand the individual differences of students in their learning. Next, fourth is the study of child development helps teachers understand how children influence their environment, and vice versa. For us to be able to understand better why students behave this way and that way. Fifth, child development is a process of change in which the child learns to handle more complex level of moving, thinking, feeling, and interacting with people and objects in the environment. Sixth, Developmental change is not same as growth. Growth simply refers to physical changes that is measurable, like change in size. While development changes are categorized into three different dimensions. It is orderly. Development stages follow a set of order. Then, it's directional. Each change in a sequence builds on the preceding 
changes. Then, stable. Early behavior and personal characteristics are good predictors of later development. However, research findings show that Intelligence in at early years may not be a good predictor in later intelligence, just like what happens to Albert Einstein. At the age of nine, he was diagnosed as autistic, but in later years of his life, turned out to be a genius one. In fact, he's a good or known physicist. Development is holistic. There, uh, there are four categories. Physical dimension, cognitive, the intellectual development, social dimension, and emotional dimensions. These are interdependent. Which means that the progress in one greatly affect the other dimensions. If something go, goes wrong in one dimension, it would bear great effect on the other dimensions. 8. A child development begins in the womb of a mother, but learning begins at birth. Yes, but during prenatal period, how the brain, the physical body, and the chemistry of the child develops affect greatly the ability to learn moving on to session two flexible learning options desired outcome demonstrate knowledge of managing classroom structure that engages learning learners individually or in groups in meaningful exploration discovery and hands-on activities within the available physical learning environment again specific objectives are provided in modules focusing on key concepts what's the legal legal basis for this provision of relevant quality equitable and inclusive education to all filipino children is the mandate of the department of education that is clearly articulated in the 1987 Philippine Constitution, which states that the DepEd shall protect and promote the right of all citizens to qualify basic education and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. And that is that remains relevant to the Philippine educational system nowadays, even during pandemia. What is flexible learning? It is a continuum of approaches in terms of time, place, content, and mode of learning. Its purpose is to increase opportunities and options to learners and give them greater control over their learning through a variety of learning modes and interactions. As you have noticed in senior high, students are given opportunity to choose whatever track or whatever strand they are going to 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 choose that suits best to their ability and capacity what are flows flows are alternative ways for those learners who are classified as students at risk of failing and students at risk of dropping our school has been implementing this reduction of failing and dropping and teachers are really encouraged to design remediations and different uh, interventions instructional interventions and just to read to prevent this then challenge for us teachers, we need to be resourceful in searching for flexible learning materials suited to the needs of every learners. In fact, there are different teaching learning delivery modalities 
during pandemic time just to cater different learners at different conditions. Moving on to session 3. The K-12 Curriculum Inclusive Education Desired Outcome Demonstrate knowledge and understanding of differentiated teaching to suit the learner's gender, needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. Implement teaching strategies that are responsive to learners' linguistic, cultural, socio-economic, and religious backgrounds. Third, use differentiated developmentally appropriate learning experience to address learners' gender, needs, strengths, and experiences. Fourth, establish the learner-centered culture by using teaching strategies that respond to their linguistic, cultural, socio-economic, and religious backgrounds. Key concepts. What's the legal basis for this? DepEd, through DepEd Order Number 72 Series of 2009, has recognized the urgency to address the need of children to receive appropriate education with a regular or inclusive classroom setting. Inclusive education embraces the philosophy of accepting all children regardless of race, size, shape, color, ability, or disability with support from school staff, students, parents, and community. That is why if you notice our school is advocating the open admission policy. And we never refuse enrollees, whether it is transferees, whatever the case may be, in adherence to this inclusive education. What are components of comprehensive, inclusive education? First, child find. So, teachers... It is a challenge for us if our students is at a loss, we have to look for them, find ways and means for students to come back to school. Then assessment, it's a continuous process of identifying the strength and weaknesses of the child that is very necessary for us teachers to be able to design what type of assessment is suitable for that certain type of student that is very much appropriate for them, for that student, allowing him to demonstrate his knowledge, skills, and understanding. Then, program options. Regular schools with or without trained SPED teachers shall be provided educational services to children with special needs. Here in Santa Ana, we have some teachers. We don't have SPED teachers, but there are teachers who have undergone series of training for them to be able to best cater to these students with special needs. Third, curriculum modifications. Implementations of these modifications shall be in the form of adaptation and accommodations to foster optimum learning based on individual's need and potentials. Then, last but not the least, parental involvement. Parents have the right to get involved in the child's education and to participate in the school in decisions concerning their child as well as the participation of the community, particularly the barangay officials. And that ends my discussion for Module 3, three sessions. That's all. Thank you very much. Have a good day. For Dynamic Principal 4, Dr. Will A. Alvarez, our active department heads, my coming tours of this teacher induction program to all our energetic inductees 
good day to all. Again, welcome to this teacher induction program orientation. I am Teacher Lolit, your resource speaker for Module 3, Session 4, 5, and 6. To begin with my talk, I will say, if teaching is your passion, then learning new things is easy and enjoyable. Teachers may play a crucial role in mission building. Through quality teachers, the Philippines can develop a holistic learners who are globally competitive, well-molded with values, and equipped with these 21st century skills. To ensure the delivery of the basic education, the Department of Education underscored the importance of this teacher induction program to fully support the continuing professional development and the progress of the newly hired teachers because we believe that a little progress each day adds up to big result. In this session, I'll just give an overview and the highlights in every session module. So let's begin with session four. Session four is all about the key stages of the basic education program. The K-12 program covers 13 years of basic education curriculum with the following K stage. K stage 1 from kindergarten to grade 3. K stage 2 from grade 4 to grade 6. K stage 3 from grade 7 to 10. And K stage 4 from grade 11 to 12. So after thorough reading decision 4, all our mentees can describe the nature and characteristics of the K-12 learners along the key stages in the basic education curriculum. They can identify the curricular goals on the key stages in the basic education program. The curricular goals of the elementary education, junior high school education, as well as senior high school education. Then they can discuss the appropriate instruction and assessment strategies per key states in the basic education program. Then they can prepare developmentally sequence and appropriate teaching learning process to meet curriculum requirements. So what are the expected output? After going through session 1 to 3 of this module, our mentees can prepare a detailed lesson plan applying the knowledge they gain from the session. So to know more how to prepare the detailed lesson plan, you may read Deep in Order number 8 series of 2015 which is all about the policy and guidelines on classroom assessment as well as DPID Order Number 42 Series of 2016 which is the key components for designing lesson. This is all about the guidelines on daily lesson preparation for the K-12 basic education program which provides the legal basis of lesson plan preparation for the basic education so we move on to session five session five is all about special education special education is a design of teaching and learning strategies for individuals with disabilities and learning difficulties it is also about understanding the different needs that students have including the different types of disability and learning difficulties. So after going through the session 5 of this module, our teacher mentees are expected to identify the characteristics of learners with special needs. 
apply teaching strategies that will respond to the learner's special learning needs, as well as develop a modified instructional design adapting the special learning needs and style of learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents. So, what is the difference between special needs and special learning needs? Special needs are term used in a clinical diagnostic and functional development to describe individuals who requires assistance for disabilities that may be medical, mental, or psychological. While special learning needs, a term that refers to children who have a learning problems or disabilities that make it harder for them to learn than most children of the same age. Effective teachers don't blame their students for not learning and students who don't learn well. They blame their instructions and try to change it so that it works better. This positive attitude is an essential part of special education and it is the path to success for all students and teachers. Just remember, all my students will learn when I find the right way to teach them. Meaning to say that as teacher, we have to consider always the strategies and approaches in dealing with learners with special learning needs. Then we move on to session six. Session six is all about diversity of learners, specifically alternative learning system. Alternative learning system is a parallel learning system in the Philippines that provides a practical option to the existing formal education when one individual cannot access formal education in school. Else is an alternative or substitute. We are very much lucky because our school, Santa Ana National High School, is very active in implementing this program. After thorough reading Module 3, Session 6, our teacher mentees will be able to answer the following questions. Number 1. What curriculum is used in us? Number 2. Who is the target learner in the us? Number 3. What materials are used in us? Number 4. Why is there a need for us in the Philippines? Number five, what is the basis of us implementation in the Philippines? Number six, how does us work? Number seven, what is the difference between basic education system and alternative learning system? And lastly, number eight, what are the program options of us learners? At the end of session 6, our inductees are required to submit their answers as their output. Just remember that all students can learn and succeed, but not in the same way and not in the same day, according to William's body. Thank you for making a difference. Good day everyone! I am Michael P. Tomilap from Senior High School Department. My task is to present Module 3, Session 9 entitled Indigenous People's Education Program. These are our desired learning outcomes. At the end of this session, for beginner teacher, you should demonstrate knowledge of teaching strategies that is inclusive of learners from indigenous groups. While for proficient teacher, you should adapt and use culturally appropriate learning strategies to address the needs of the learners from indigenous groups. 
To meet the desired learning outcomes, we will be guided with the following objectives. First, understand the indigenous people's education program by identifying the learning needs and characteristics of the indigenous group of learners. Second, identify differentiated teaching strategies to suit IP learners' needs, interests, and experiences. Third, create a contextualized lesson sequence for IPs enrolled in a class. And lastly, use a culturally appropriate teaching strategies to address the needs of IP learners. It will be started with a pretest with two parts. In part 1, put a check on the statement which you think is true for letter A, Indigenous People's Education Program with 9 items. Letter B, IP Characteristics with 4 items. And for part 2, Fill in the column below to identify the characteristics and needs of IP learners and the possible challenges and actions to address their needs. It will be followed by the following key concepts. Who are the indigenous peoples of the Philippines? The Indigenous Peoples' Right Act of 1997 also known as Republic Act Number no. 8371 or simply EPRA, has provided different definitions about the indigenous peoples of the Philippines. The Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, Chapter 2, Section 3, also discussed and described the types of community the indigenous peoples have, the community location, as well as their livelihood. The next paragraph discuss the challenges they encountered and the succeeding paragraphs also discuss and describe the name and group of IPs in the Philippines. The characteristics of indigenous peoples will also be discussed, specifically mentioned their attachment to ancestral land, territory, and resources, and most especially their right to education. Next is the possible challenges in handling the IP learners, specifically mentioned the need to contextualize the learning instructions due to their socio-cultural status. And to ponder our knowledge all about the indigenous peoples, these are the suggested readings. These are the activities and assessment for this session. Our first activity is entitled, House of Ideas. You have to synthesize what you have read through a graphic organized, particularly a house. In each part of the house, indicate the following learner's needs, challenges, action, and your role as a teacher. The second activity is entitled Lifelines. Just read the scenario below and perform the two tasks. Our third and last activity is entitled Lesson Sequence. Just read the scenario and follow the instruction. And with this guide question, accomplish this table. The last part of this session is the assessment or post test. As you can observe, all parts and items in the pre test are exactly the same in the post test. Thank you for listening and good day once again. Good day everyone! I am Zara J. Buya Nabajo, a newly installed master teacher from Senior High School Department and my task is to present to you the Teacher Induction Program Module 3, Session 7 and 8. The desired learning outcomes for Session 7 is to adapt teaching learning activities that are responsive and sensitive to the learner's linguistic, cultural, and socio-economic and religious background. Another is to establish a learner-centered culture by using teaching strategies that respond to their linguistic, cultural, socio-economic, and religious background. Objectives for this session are as follows. Describe the salient features of the Madrasa education in the K-12 basic education program, 
adopt various teaching strategies and activities that are appropriate to the needs of the Filipino Muslim learners and demonstrate familiarity and appreciation of the language, cultural practices, beliefs, social nature, and attitudes of Muslim children and youth towards learning. Well, actually, there are several programs for Filipino Muslim learners. A few are as follows. The Madrasa Education Program, the Allied Program, also known as the Arabic Language and Islamic Values Education, and the Prime Program, known as the Philippine Response for Indigenous and Muslim Education. If we look in carefully to our school form 1 for the school register, in particular the column for religion, you will notice that 50 to 70 percent of our students here in Santa Ana National High School are Muslim. So it is very essential that we know the, the Muslim education program for Filipino Muslim learners such as the Madrasa Education Program, the Allied Program or the Arabic Language and Islamic Values Education, the Prime or the Philippine Response for Indigenous and Muslim Education, and the important things to remember when handling Muslim learners, such as the dietary considerations. Remember, strictly no pork and preferably halal foods. The Friday prayer, fasting schools and students, the prayer schools and students regulation, which you will know more if you walk through or if you read modules, uh, module 3, session 7. Relevant issuance responsive to the needs of Muslim learners are Deped Order 32, Series of 2013, Reiterating Dex Order Number 53, 2001, Strengthening the Protection of Religious Rights of Students, and Deped Order Number 41, Series of 2017, known as the Policy Guidelines on Madrasa Education in the K-12 Basic Education. And again, you will learn more of this as you go through the TIP module 3, session 7. And you will uh, you will check there the activities and assessment, such as the read test, brain teasers, the coach read you can activity, the reflection, and the post test. And that will be all for session 7. Let's proceed to the next session 8, special interest programs in the Enhanced Basic Education Curriculum. The, the desired learning outcomes are as follows. For beginning teachers, one is to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of differentiated teaching to suit the learner's gender, strengths, interests, and experiences. Another is to demonstrate knowledge in the implementation of relevant and responsive learning programs. For Proficient Teacher Indicators, or PTI, use differentiated developmentally appropriate learning experiences to address learners' gender needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. Another is to adopt and implement learning programs that ensure relevance and responsiveness to the needs of all learners. Also in this session, you will learn the the following which are the special programs prior to the implementation of the K-12 curriculum. No, a sample is the special program in the arts or SPA. Our school is very known for our SPA program. Then we also have the special science program or SSP which is the counterpart of now the STEM strand in senior high school. Then we also have the special program in foreign languages and the Strength and Tech Book Education Program, or STVEP, which is now the counterpart of the PBL track for senior high school. Now, with the implementation of the K-12 curriculum, these special interest programs are, are then served as link or preparatory to SHS tracks and strands. We have four senior high school tracks, the Academic, the TBL, Arts and Design, and Sports track. Under these four tracks are different strengths. For example, in the academic track, we have Accountancy, Business, and Management, or ABM. This is in preparation for those who would like to take business-related courses such as Academy, BS Economics, and etc. We also have, under the academic track, we also have the Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, or the STEM strand 
which is a good preparation for those who would like to take engineering and medical related courses. Then the third strand is the Humanities and Social Sciences or HUMES, which is a good preparation for those students who would like to take up early childhood education, a Bachelor of, Science, uh, Bachelor of Secondary Education, or, uh, or and other related courses. Now, we also the fourth strand under this academic track is the general academic strand. This is not only for those who are students who are undecided, but this is also good for those students who are targeting courses which is not directly related to ABM STEM or UMS. For example, if you would like to be a soldier, a fireman, a policeman, or a seaman. So the gas program would be good for you. Now, we also have uh, the TVL track for senior high school. Uh, they also have different strands such as the home economics with sub-strands cookery, housekeeping, hairdressing, and etc. Then we also have this industrial arts, example of which are the electrical installation and maintenance or the EIM, carpentry, ismau, and automotive. We also have the ICT strand for EDL track. So the sub so the sub strand for that will be the computer software service or the CSS, computer programming, computer animation, and etc. We also have here arts and design track. Under this arts and design track are the different strands such as music, visual arts, media arts, and performing arts. There's still a fourth track, a sports track, but since uh, we do not have that in our school. Now, why? Because actually, the availability of human and material resources, community and industry partners are the most important considerations to take when deciding which senior high school track and strands to offer in a particular school. Uh, primarily because senior high school students will undergo the work immersion program or the short-term on-the-job training in external stakeholders. Now, another consideration is that teachers must meet the depth and qualification requirements before they can teach in the special interest programs under the K-12. For example, teacher, TVL teachers must at least hold National Certificate 3 for each strand, for example, housekeeping, cookery, and, and so on. And also for the students, learners who want to be enrolled in the STEM program must qualify and meet the requirements stated in Debit Order 55 Series of 2016 known as the Policy Guidelines on the National Assessment of Student Learning for the K-12 Basic Education Program. An example of this is that if a student would like to enroll in the STEM program, he or she must meet the at least an average of 85 from the junior high school. Now, for this particular session eight, you will in, uh, the the inductees will have pre-test, the oral presentation in learning action cell or the lab, the development of weekly lesson log for target learners, and key stage, the reflection, and also the post-its. And that would be all. Thank you. A pleasant afternoon to everyone, especially the mentees. The Raling Palipunan Department is the one assigned to present Module 4. Module 4 is about teaching approaches. As teacher, it is very important to know the different types of teaching approaches that suit to the needs of diverse learners. Th this module is designed to guide us in pedagogy Gogical approaches such as learning approach, explicit teaching, and differentiated instructions. Module 4 is divided into 8 sessions. I am tasked to give you the overview of session 1 to 3. What are the topics? What will happen? Or what are you going to do on each session? Session 1 is about differentiated instruction. Session 2 is about explicit learning. Mm -hmm. Session 3 is about 
21st century teaching. In each session, desired learning outcomes and the objectives will be presented to you every start of the session for you to be guided to achieve its goal. Pre-test will be given to check if you have an advanced knowledge on the topics. Important terms to remember is presented as glossary of terms. There will be discussion and brainstorming along the way. Different activities and assessment will be given. Post-test will be administered to check your learning on each session. You are going to make a reflection. Guide questions are given for this activity. In session two, there will be demonstration teaching and in session three, monitoring of daily lesson plan will be conducted. Okay, for you to have an idea of the topics on each, on each session, allow me to give short presentation on it. In session one, differentiated inst instruction. Diverse learn learners is being discussed. Group of learners, there are group, uh, learners must be group, first group, learners' gender, needs, strength, interest, and ex experiences. Second, learners' linguistic, cultural, social, economic, and religious group. Third, learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents. Fourth, learners in difficult circumstances. And fifth, learners from indigenous group. It is very important for educational practices to be flexible and responsive to all this group of learners. This is a big challenge to all of us to make learning relevant, authentic, and valuable. Learning style is also discussed in this session. Session 2, Explicit Teaching. What is this explicit teaching? Explicit teaching or instruction is characterized by a series of supports whereby students are guided through the learning process with clear statement about the purpose and rationality for learning the new, the new skill, clear expectations and demonstration of the instructional target, and supported practice with feedback until independent mastery has been achieved. Okay. Explicit instruction is a sequence of support, and there are six components of explicit instruction. A. Setting the stage for learning. The teacher must assure that learning will be possible. Uh, objectives will be given. Then, letter B. Explaining the students on what to do. There must be clear instruction given to the students for them to know on what to do. Letter C, modeling for students. I do. Offers the students an opportunity to watch the process. Letter D, guided process or guided practice. We do. Use cues, prompts, questions, graphic organizers, organizers and forms then there will be independent practice you do let the students do by itself during this time teachers should be moving around the room uh, working and guiding the students making sure making sure that students can complete the task independently and there must be closure and assessment other activities in this session were given and there will be demo teaching one hour and all the mentees will make a reflection paper every end of the session and then guide questions will be given during the making of reflection. Session 3 is about the 10th, 21st century teaching. Uh, the nature of learners by case stages is divided into three aspects of life. The physical, the social, em emotional, and cognitive development of learners. Uh, there are four stages, key stages in this session. The transition year, uh, K1 from five years old to six years old. 
a middle year, grade 2 to 3, 7 to 8, eight years old or 9, then pre-adolescence grade, grade 4 to grade 6, 10 to 12 years old, and the early teens grade 7 to grade grade 7 and grade 8, 13 and 14 years old. Each stages undergo different development. In this session, uh, the seven C's or uh, in 21st century up long skills is also discussed. First, the critical thinking and doing. Second is the creativity. Third is the collaboration. Fourth, socio-cultural understanding. Fifth, the communication. Six, computing ICT literacy. Seven, the career and learning self-reliance. And every skills will be discussed later. And then, there is also relevant and responsive learning programs. There are four methods for making instruction relevant to the learners. Discussing how theory can be applied in practice. Making a link to local cases. Relating subject matter to every application. And discussing and finding application, current news issues and events. This is all about uh, session 1, 2, and 3 in module 4 teaching approaches thank you now for this afternoon i am presenting about module 4 session 4 about daily lesson log session 5 about contextualization localization and indianization and session 6 for the school forms allow me to show my screen i'm going to discuss Module 4, uh, Section uh, Session 4, I mean, the Daily Lesson Lab. Now, the objective is, one, first, explain the teaching process through the essential elements of the Daily Lesson Lab, or we call it the DLL, and the Detailed Lesson Plan, or the DLP. The second objective is prepare a once week developmentally sequence teaching and learning process following the DLL and DLP requirements. Third objective, plan and implement a one-session DLP to be observed by a TIP mentor and the school head. Desired learning outcomes. For the beginning teaching indicators or the so-called the BTIS, you are going to prepare developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process to meet curriculum requirements. For the proficient teacher indicators or the PTIS, plan, manage, and implement developmentally sequenced teaching and learning process to meet curriculum requirements and varied teaching context. We have glossary of terms. Daily, what is daily lesson log or the DLL? It is a template teachers use to log parts of their daily lesson. The DLL covers a day's or a week's worth of lessons and contains the following parts. Objectives, the content, learning, resources, procedures, remarks, and reflection for the detailed lesson plan or the dlp is a teacher's roadmap for a lesson it contains a detailed description of the steps a teacher will take to teach a particular topic a typical dlp contains the following parts one objectives content two three learning resources four the procedures five remarks and reflection for the instructional planning is the process of systematically planning developing evaluating and managing the instructional process by using principles of teaching and learning this is now the example of the dll template one is for the objective for the content standard B for the performance standards, 
C for the learning competencies. Two part two content. Part three the learning resources. And then uh, part four is the procedure for the part of the develop uh, procedures. I mean reviewing, establishing a purpose for the lesson, presenting examples, uh, instances of the new lesson. D discussing new concept and practicing new skills. For the letter E, discussing new concept and practicing new skills. For the letter F, developing mastery formative assessment. For the letter G, finding practical application of concept and skills in the daily living. H, making generalization and abstractions or about the lesson. I, evaluating learning. J, additional activities for application. For letter K, Remediation. Now, for the part five is the remarks, and for the five, part six is for the reflection. This is uh, the example of the daily lesson plan template. Yan. Parts of the DLP. So, you're going to make five days, no? The lesson plan. Objective, contents, learning resources, the procedure, the warm up or review. Letter B, introduction. Letter C, presentation, B, practice, E, evaluation, remarks, and reflection. Now, for the, the next session is about the session 5, contextualization, localization, and indigenization of resource materials. Objective of session 5. Session 5. 1. Explain the importance of contextualization in the teaching, learning process, and development of materials. Second objective, develop DLP, DLL, implementing contextualization. And for the third objective, display self-confidence in performing actual teaching demonstration using contextualization. For the beginning teacher, Implement teaching strategies that are responsive to the learner's linguistic, cultural, and socio-economic and religious backgrounds. Two, show skills in the selection, development, and use of a variety of teaching and learning resources, including ICT, to address learning goals. For the proficient teacher, A, Show skills in the selection, development, and use of a variety of teaching and learning resources, including ICT, to address learning goals. B. Establish a learner-centered culture by using teaching strategies that respond to their linguistic, cultural, socio-economic, and religious backgrounds. We have glossary of terms. So we're going to define the meaning of contextualization. The educational process of relating the curriculum to a particular setting situation of area of application to make the competencies relevant, meaningful, and useful to all learners. Indigenization. It is a process of enhancing curriculum competencies, education resources, and teaching learning processes in relation to the context of the learner's community. What about localization? It is the process of releasing learning content specified in the curriculum to local information and materials in the learner's community. For the session 6 about school forms and learner information system for the so-called LIS. We have the three objectives. The first objective, to identify the different school forms and their uses. Two, acquire knowledge on the use of the learner information system or the LIS. And three, demonstrate knowledge of providing timely, accurate, and feedback using the different school forms and the LIS. These are the example of school forms. For SF1, we called it the school register. 
for the school register is a list of learners who are officially enrolled and attending class. This provides detailed information for learners of the summary data being reported to EBEIS. Or number two, the SF2, to call the daily attendance report of learners. It is a list of the learners' daily attendance which should be submitted to the office of the principal or registrar every fifth day of the succeeding month. Number three, the SF3 or the so-called book issued and returned. The record of issued and returned books and other learning materials per subject per student. This is usually filled out at the beginning and end of the school year. For number four, SF137, so-called the school permanent record of learners. It is tangible by the school enrolled or the school the student will transfer to. For form number five, which is for SF138 or the school report progress card of the learner. What the teacher gives to the parents and the learners to reflect their performance in the said quarter and grade or year level. Number six form, the so-called SF4, monthly learners' movement and attendance. Provides the summary number of learners who move in and out of the school during the month, which is based upon the submitted SF2 by the class advisors. This form tracks the number of dropout, transferred in and transferred out, during the month and the cumulative record as the reporting month. SF5, Report on Promotion and Learning Progress. It is a list of learners, academic performance, and result of assessment by the end of the school year. And then for SF10, the learner's permanent record. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share the uh, information for the newly hired teachers. Good afternoon. Allow me to share my screen. I'm going to present to you session seven and eight of module four. Okay, what is session seven? Session seven is all about classroom management. Well, session eight is about child protection and anti-bullying. Policies. Okay. So, desired learning outcomes, beginning teacher indicators or the BTIs, demonstrate knowledge of positive and non-violent discipline in the management of learner behavior. And for the PTIs or the proficient teacher indicators, manage learner behavior constructively by applying positive and non-violent discipline to ensure learning-focused environments. We have four objectives for this session. First objective, illustrate and share the classroom management challenges you have experienced during the first week, the first year, and the first month of teaching. Second objective, list down observed best practices of seasoned teachers that show positive and non-violent discipline in managing learner behavior. Third objective, discusses which of the best practices could be easily adopted by a beginning teacher. And the fourth objective, design and craft classroom rules to ensure positive teaching and learning environment. Okay, for the pre-test, you will be answering series of questions that will test your classroom management skills and under the glossary of terms you will be you are going to define classroom management for the key concepts you will get to learn about the four key stages in the k-12 curriculum which is the grade 3 the grade 6 the grade 10 and the grade 12 
it is important that you get yourself familiar with the four key stages in the K-12 curriculum because you have to acknowledge that different strategies work well under each level. Okay, for under the activities and assessments, you are going to answer activities and perform some activities that will check your classroom management skills. And lastly, you will have to take the post test. What about session eight? Session eight is about the child protection and anti-bullying policies. What are the desired learning outcomes? For the BTIs or, or for the beginning teacher indicators, first, you have to demonstrate knowledge of the policies, guidelines, and procedures that provide safe and secure learning environment. Second, seek advice concerning strategies that can enrich your teaching practice. For the PTIs or the proficient teacher indicators, first, establish safe and secure learning environments to enhance learning through the consistent implementation of policies, guidelines, and procedures. Number two, participate in collegial discussions that use teacher and learner feedback to enrich learning practice. Objectives. There are four objectives for this session. Number one, explain the importance of policies, guidelines, and procedures of child protection and anti-bullying that provide safe and secure learning environment. Second, cite classroom situations or practices that show adherence to child protection and anti-bullying practices. Third, identify people who can go to for help if you are bullied or witness bullying to seek advice concerning strategies that can enrich teaching practice. And fourth, list ways to participate in collegial discussions that use teacher and learner feedback to enrich teaching practice about bullying incidents. Okay, again, you are going to take a quick test that will check your knowledge about bullying and its policies. Okay, some glossary of terms. Okay, there, there will be terms that is related to bullying and the glossary of terms. You will, you will get to learn about some terms related to bullying as well as some key concepts about bullying. You will be answering activities and assessments that will make you read some situations. And then in these situations, you are going to identify what kind of bullying exists in different situations and how are you going to address the different situations. And last but not the least, you are going to answer a post text. That ends my presentation for today. I hope you you learn from, from the different modules that are presented to you today. Uh, good luck, teachers, and happy teaching. My respect to our dear principal, Dr. Roel E. Alvarez, to our high spirited department heads and master teachers, and especially to our inductees in attendance. A pleasant day to all. Welcome to the Department of Education Teachers Induction Program. What new teachers need to learn? The early years of teaching are a special time in a teacher's career, different from what has gone before and what comes after. Beginning teachers are on their own, faced with the same responsibilities as their experienced colleagues. Today, my special task is to present to you the Module 5 of Teacher's Induction Program, Focus on the Learning Process. The Learning Process Module will assist you as the newly hired teacher in understanding the nature of the learners across key learning stages. Kindergarten to grade three, grade four to grade six, grade seven to grade 10, and grade 11 to grade 12. This module will also help you to better understand the whys and the hows of offering learning programs that are responsive to the needs of the learners. In the later part of the module, you will do a self-reflection on how you would become an effective teacher 
capable in the delivery of quality basic education among the learners. To learn more this module, with me are the beautiful ladies with a heart and both are exemplary school leaders with exceptional performance in the teaching in Santa Ana National High School. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you my co-presenters. The first presenter who will discuss on the first session of Module 5, the learner-centered learning, is no other than Ms. Rosalena A. Pelos. Hi! Hello! A master teacher too from the mathematics department. And the second presenter is Mrs. Nena Estudillo, a master teacher one from MAPI department and who will deliver on the second session, which is the learning environment. Hello, Ma'am Nena and Ma'am Rose. Hello, Sir Hello. Roger. Hello, Sir Roger. Hello, everyone. Now I give the time to Mrs. Rose Pelos. Thank you, Sir Roger, teachers. Allow me to present to you the continuation of Module 5. The Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, PPST, defines teacher quality in the Philippines. The standards describe the expectation of teachers increase, increasing levels of knowledge, practice, and professional engagement. So, being a teacher, dapat ma-increase ninyo ang levels of knowledge. You have to create effective teaching and learning environments for all students. Identify their own learning needs, analyze, and expand the professional learning. Teachers demonstrate respect and professionalism in all interactions with students, colleagues, parents, and the community. So, so, BTI and PTIs. BTI means Beginning Teacher Indicators. Uh, this one is uh, meaning the teachers that have been teaching three years and below. For PTI, Proficient Teacher Indicators, this, this is for teachers teaching for more than three years. For Session 1, Learner-Centered Learning. So, these are the contents. Letter A, Desired Learning Outcomes. Letter B, Objectives. Letter C, Pre-Tests. Letter D, Key Concepts. Letter E, Activities and Assessment. Letter F, Reflections. And the last is letter G, Post-Test. In session one for the desired learning outcomes, that includes for BTI, letter A, demonstrate understanding of, of supportive learning environment that nurtures and inspires learners' participation. And then for PTI, Proficient Teacher Indicator, letter B, maintain supportive learning environment that nurtures and inspires learners to participate, cooperate, and collaborate in continued learning. Okay, for the objectives, letter A, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the principles and on learning, learner-centered learning. Letter B, design a classroom activity by adopting learn, learner-centered learning approaches and strategies. And letter C, apply learner-centered activity effectively through lesson planning. Why is it important to understand the principle of learner-centered learning? So, learner-centered learning is an instructional approach in which the learners influence the content, activities, materials, and pace of learning. This learning model places the learner in the center of learner learning process. The teacher provides learners with opportunities to learn independently from one another and coaches them in, in the skills that they need to do so effectively. So this kind of approach views learners as active agents. They bring their own knowledge, 
past experiences, education, and ideas. And this impacts how they take on board new information and learn. And now, I welcome you, Ma'am Nena Estadillo, Master Teacher 1, MAPE Department for the continuation. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Rose. Hi, good day again. Let us now proceed to our session two, which is the learning environment. With the following contents, A, desired learning outcomes, B, objectives. This will be presented later. C, pretest. As you go through with this module, you are going to take the pretests in order to check the prior knowledge regarding the learning environment. D, glossary of terms, the terminologies that you are going to encounter with its definition. F, the key concepts or the main ideas. E, rather. <laughs> F, reflections. You are going to share your thoughts regarding the learning environment. And lastly, G, the post-test, the assessment in which you are going to have or to gauge your learning. Desired learning outcomes. This layout on what you are going to do and to know. You are the beginning teacher, so you are in the first level. And after completing the program, you all will be transitioning into proficient teacher or as proficient teachers, as mentioned by Mam Rose. Beginning teacher indicator one is to demonstrate knowledge of policies, guidelines, and procedures that provide safe and secure learning environments. The PTI one is to establish safe and secure learning environments to enhance learning through the consistent implementation of policies, guidelines, and procedures. BTI 2, demonstrate understanding of learning environments that promote fairness, respect, and care to encourage learning. BTI 2 is to maintain learning environments that promote fairness, respect, and to encourage learning. BTI 3, to demonstrate knowledge of managing classroom structure that engage learners individually or in groups in meaningful exploration, discovery, and hands-on activities with the available physical learning environments. PTI 3, manage classroom structure to engage learnings individually or in groups in meaningful exploration, discovery, and hands-on activities within the available physical and learning environments. BTI 4 is to demonstrate understanding of supportive learning environments that nurture and inspire learners' participation. The PTI 4 maintains supportive learning environments that nurture and inspire learners to participate, cooperate, and collaborate in continued learning. BTI 5, demonstrate knowledge of learning, environments that motivate learners to work productively by assuming responsibility for their own learning. BTI 5, apply a range of successful strategies that maintain learning environments that motivate learners to work productively by assuming responsibility for their own learning. BTI 6, Demonstrate knowledge of positive and non-violent discipline in the management of learners' behavior. PTI 6, manage learner behavior constructively by applying positive and non-violent discipline to ensure learning focused environment. As you go through with all of this, by merely observing the beginning teacher is purely on the demonstration of knowledge and understanding. And in proficient teacher is on the execution, the management and application in order to have learning focus environment. These are the following objectives of the session two. A, understand the role of teacher to provide and manage a learning environment that is learning focused. 
We teachers play the vital roles in the lives of our students. We are the molder, the motivator, and we have to inspire students in order for them to become useful citizens. In order to have a learning-focused environment, as I mentioned a while ago, B is to create a learning environment that is learning-focused to promote learner responsibility and achievement. We teachers should prepare or apply strategies, pedagogical approaches, in order to increase student promotion and achievement. Teaching in this pandemic time is quite challenging. And moreover, the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, or the PPST, highlights the role of teachers to provide learning environments that are safe, secure, fair, and supportive in order to promote learner responsibility and achievement. The PPSD, by the way, this is the basis for learning and the development projects. The Department of Education focusing on the continuity of learning and uh, making all the teachers properly equipped in implementing the K-12 program. Moreover, this refers to the diverse physical locations, contexts, and cultures in which students learn, since students may learn in a wide variety of settings, such as outside of school locations and outdoor environments. The term is often used as a more accurate or preferred alternative to classroom which has more limited and traditional connotations. A room with rows of desks and a chalkboard, for example. But the learning environment nowadays in the new normal setting differs or changes. To continue the learning, distance learning is a key modality in the delivery of learning. We are embracing now the online learning tasks or the tools, the platforms, and there is also what we call the radio, TV, and inspired teaching. After completing this program, my dear beginning teachers, you are going to savor the success as shown in the presentation or as shown to you now, is the claims of the past. Some of the pictures, uh, this was during the TIP closing program last December 13, 2013 at the Grand Mansi Hotel with our former principal, Mama Sinto, TIP coordinator, Mama Verana, with my co-presenters here, Sir Roger, my department head, too, with former or fellow master teachers. This was uh, really memorable. In closing, I leave this uh, quote to you. A key to growing as an educator is to keep company mainly with teachers who uplift you, whose presence inspires you, and whose dedication drives you. This is from Robert John Mann, an educator, a poet, educator, and a mentor. To teach is to touch a life forever teaching and touching the hearts of our students shall continue despite of the situation we have. Again, always remember that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Again, thank you and God bless everyone. Magandang hapon sa lahat. Lalong-lalong na sa ating buting principal na si Inong Ruel. A. Alvarez at sa ating mga kasamaang mga master teachers sa iba't ibang departamento at ngayon din sa ating mga inductees, TIP inductees. Ako pala si Ginang Beatriz C. Cloribel, master teacher ng Filipino Department. Ako ay natasang maglahat sa inyo kung ano napapaloob sa module 6 at session 1. This domain affirms the role of teachers in establishing school communities. Partnership aim at enriching the learning environment, as well as the community's engagement in the educative process. This domain expects teachers to identify and respond to opportunities 
that link teaching and learning the classrooms with experiences, interests, and aspirations of the wider school community and other key stakeholders. It concerns the importance of teachers understanding and fulfilling their obligations in upholding professional ethics, accountability, and transparency to promote professional and harmonious relationships with learners, parents, schools, and the wider community. Session 1. Community as a resource in the teaching learning process. A. Desired learning outcomes. It is divided into two. First, beginning teacher indicators, BTIS. Proficient teacher indicators, PTIS. Under BTIS 6.1.1, demonstrate an understanding of knowledge of learning environments that are responsive to community contexts. Under the PTIS, maintain learning environments that are responsive to community contexts. And under BTIS indicator 6.2.1, Seek advice concerning strategies that build relationship with parents, guardians, and the wider community. And under PTIS 6.2.2, build the relationship with parents, guardians, and wider school community to facilitate involvement in the educative process. And under BTIS 6.4.1, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of school policies and procedures to foster harmonious relationship with the wider school community. And under PTIS, the Proficient Teacher Indicators 6.4.2, comply with and implement school policies and procedures consistently to foster harmonious relationship with learners, parents, and other stakeholders. B. Objectives. A. Describe the community where your school is located. B. Identify the different resources in the community that facilitate learning. And letter C. Express appreciation to school community's contribution in improving the teaching learning process. And letter D. Prepare a work plan to further enhance understanding in using community as a resource in teaching learning process. Letter C, pre-test. Read each of the following items. Write T in the blank before each number if the statement is true. And F, it is false, and write the reasons why it is false on the next line. You are given 10 items to answer. Letter D. There are the terms uh, you see in this session, such as community, stakeholders, internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, resources, teaching learning process, parent-teacher association, and the last one, school governing council. It is stated in session one, it is defined as the following in this session. Letter E. Key concept. Scan your community. Filling the table below will help you get acquainted with your school community. If you have no answer for some items, just leave it blank. F. Activities and assessment. Refers to what are the available resources in your community and how can they facilitate the teacher learning process. You may ask the help of your school head or your colleagues in data gathering or you can conduct field trip in your community. Here are the following to focus, such as the types of resources, what can it offer, how can it facilitate the teaching learning process. In another also activity, you have to read the situation below and answer the question that follows. There are four questions to answer. In another text to read and understand, the school as a laboratory for learning. We have also forced a question to answer. G, reflection. You may look for your partner who as a colleague who is capable of coaching and mentoring you on how to improve your teaching learning process using the resources in your community. Be guided with the form below. Here are the questions for this item. What are the resources in the community? How will it be utilized in the teaching and learning process? 
when will this be utilized? The last one, evidence of outcome. Letter H, the post test. If you have to write P if the statement is true and F if it's false. We're also given 10 items to answer. So this is for all my topic. Thank you very much. A pleasant day, everyone. To our principal four, Dr. Ruel A. Alvarez, to all the department heads, master teachers, and all inductees, good afternoon. I am tasked to give a brief presentation of Module 6, The School and Community Linkage, Session 2 and 3. Module 6, Session 2 is entitled School and Community Relationships, while Session 3 is about parents as teachers' partners in the students' learning and as a stakeholder of the school. Session 2, the school and community relationships. This session covers the following. A, desired learning outcomes. B, objectives. C, pretest. D, glossary of terms. E, key concepts. F, activities and assessment. And G, reflection. Okay, let's take a look on the desired learning outcomes. For beginning teacher, the indicator is seek advice concerning strategies that build relationships with parents, guardians, and the wider community. For the proficient teacher, the indicator is build relationship with parents or guardians and the wider school community to facilitate involvement in the educative process. Next, the objectives. Explain the role of teachers as he or she seeks advice to the person in authority in building good relationships with parents and guardians and the wider community. Next, identify and apply strategies that the school can use to build good relationships with parents, guardians, and the wider community. The third objective is strengthen and sustain the involvement of parents, guardians, and the wider community in the educative process. Okay, the next part is the pretest. For the pretest, there are three activities that you are going to perform. The first one is the true or false. There are 10 items. And then the second one is you have to choose the correct term to complete each of the sentences. There are five items for this. The next activity is you have to arrange the activities in school and community according to your priority. One, two, nine. Okay, so this module also includes the glossary of terms. There are words there that were given definition to help you easily understand the concepts. Okay, for example, the teacher, the term teacher is defined as a critical thinker, a good communicator, an effective collaborator, and has the ability to learn the technology okay so just th that is just an example of the terms okay next let's go to the activities or the key concepts okay number one today's educational endeavor needs a multitasking teacher that can respond to the needs of the present time this teacher is expected to be a facilitator of learning, a, share, a sharer of knowledge, an agent of change, a legal counsel, and a person in authority. His or her roles are not only limited in the four walls of the classroom, but 
he or she needs to establish linkages with the people in the community. The people in the community where the school is located believe that he or she can do something in the achievement of the school goals. Okay? Those are or that is the first concept and the second one is a beginning teacher seeks advice in finding ways to collaborate with the community in all aspects of endeavors in the educational process. Establishing linkages with the parents, guardians, and the wider community can be done through consultations and involvement in decisions that would contribute to the success of schools programs projects and activities utilizing the documents needed in entering into partnerships such as memorandum of understanding memorandum of agreement letters etc all this will facilitate effective communication in building good relationships with parents in the wider community the third concept is, as a teacher, you must be ready to collaborate and seek advice to the human resources inside and outside the school. Okay, so let's move to the next part, which is the activities in assessment. This part is divided into two. The first part is all about case analysis, wherein there are four cases to be analyzed and assessed. Secondly, you will be asked to respond to the different situations. Okay, so that's all for the achievement, the activities, and assessments. Now, the last part of this session is the reflection, wherein you will be having your journal writing. Okay, that's all for the session two. Now, let's proceed to session three. It is all about parents as, the, as teachers, partners in the students learning and as the stakeholder of the school. The module contains the following glossary of terms. There are some terms being used in the discussion which are defined so that it would be easier in your part. Next are the key concepts followed by the activities and assessment and lastly the reflection now these are the terms that were given definition in this module for example academic program benefits communication skill motivation partnership students performance okay next are the key concepts for session three number one Positive parents' school communications benefit parents. The manner in which schools communicate and interact with parents affects the extent and the quality of parents' home involvement with their children's learning. For example, schools that communicate not so good news about students' performances more often than recognizing students' excellence will discourage parents' involvement by making them feel they cannot effectively help their children. The second concept is parents also benefit from being involved in their children's education by getting ideas from school on how to help and support their children and by learning more about the school's academic program and how it works. Most importantly, perhaps parents benefit by becoming more confident about the value of their school involvement. Parents develop a greater appreciation for the important role they play in their children's education. Number three, substantial evidence exists showing that parents' involvement benefits students, including raising their academic achievement. There are other advantages 
for children when parents become involved, namely, increase motivation for learning, improve behavior, more regular attendance, and a more positive attitude about homework and school in general. Number four, parental involvement can free teachers to focus more on the task of teaching children. Also, by having more contact with parents, teachers learn more about students' needs and home environment, which is information they can apply toward better meeting those needs. Parents who are involved tend to have more positive view of teachers, which results in improved teaching morale. That's the key concepts for this session. Okay, let's proceed to the activities and assessment. There are three activities you are going to comply on this part. Okay, just read your module so that you will know what the activities are so that we can proceed to the next one and the last part. Now, the last part is the reflection. And here's the question for the reflection. How will I develop my interpersonal skill so that I continue dealing with and getting support from the PPE? Okay? That ends my uh, presentation this afternoon. But before I go, please remember this. Our time and dedication is not just spent making sure that we are being present in the moment with our students, but also in creating relationships that impact the future life of a child, a family, and a community by Kristen Steyer. That ends my presentation. Thank you for listening. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Good day, fellow educator. Let me introduce to you myself. I am Mr. Arniel Rial an ASP Master Teacher in this institution. My topic today is in continuity with Module 6, which is entitled the School and Community Linkages. Let me proceed to Session Number 4, which is to strengthen and sustain good relationship with the parents, guardians, and the wider community. What is our legal basis in creating the PTA? Dep Ed Order Number 54, Series of 2009. This is to organize PTA or Parents Teachers Association, which this provides forum for discussion of issues and solution related to school program. Ensure full cooperation, the efficient implementation of a school program. <laughs> Next, Parents Teacher Organization Unit shall provide mechanism in ensuring proper coordination with members of the community. Next, to provide an avenue for discussing relevant concerns and issues and provide support to the school for the promotion of the common interest. Standing committees may be created with the PTA organization to coordinate with civic organization and other stakeholders to foster unity and cooperation. Number three, build strong bond among teachers parents, guardians, and wider community. There is a need to build a strong bond among the teachers, parents, guardians, and wider community through PTA. More than this, sustaining the school and community relation is a great challenge 
to the teachers in school. How can teachers build a strong bond with the parents and the community? Next, how can teachers sustain the smooth relationship with the community? Example of this is organizing Family Day, Recognition Day, Christmas Day, Graduation Day, Parents, Teachers Conference, and Brigada Escuela. Let us proceed to session number five. Building partnership and establishing linkages. Objectives. One, understand the policies and procedure of the program on school and community partnership. Identify the provision or program that promotes school and community relations. Number three, Identify your school's key partners and stakeholders. Number four, describe concrete ways or steps of collaborating with potential partners and stakeholders. Number five, evaluate your involvement in specific activities that promote school and community partnership. Number six, cite concrete ways to maximize your participation, involvement in school and community partnership activities. Key concept. Number one, policies and procedures provide mechanism and guidance in implementing various program, activities, and projects that calls for partnership with private sectors. Number two, Policies and procedures serve as guiding principle of the teachers in establishing linkages and partnership with stakeholders. Number three, continuous involvement in planning, organizing, and implementing plans and programs of the school is needed to achieve the desired learning outcome. Number four, Good relationship is necessary towards the improvement of the school which will benefit the school populace in general. Number five, Brigada Escuela or Schools Maintenance Week is an annual program of the Department of Education. Number seven, Deped Order Number 40, Series of 2015, the guidelines on the K-12 partnership with focus on work immersion opportunities for public senior high school learners. Number eight, school-based management, a form of management practice which is characterized by shared accountabilities, shared responsibilities, and shared governance in school with the stakeholders. Number nine, guidelines on governing parents, teacher association, or PTA. This allows the organization of parents and teachers association to provide a forum of discussion of issues and their solutions related to the total school program and to ensure the full cooperation of parents in the efficient implementation of such program. Number 10, Disaster Risk Reduction and Management mandates all national government agencies, including DepEd, to institutionalize the, the culture of safety at all levels, and this gives opportunities for the department to coordinate with the LGUs and the community to ensure readiness for safety in times of emergency. 11. School-based feeding program. This addresses the malnutrition problem and short-term hunger among public school children. This calls for financial support to augment the budget for the program and schools may link with stakeholders for assistance. Number 12. Gulayan sa Paralan. This seeks to raise the level of public consciousness 
on the health and nutritional dimension as well as economic benefit of establishing school, household and community gardens. Guarding the garden against the grass-eating domesticated animals can be a great support from the community. Ladies and gentlemen, this ends my topic. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned things from this particular topic and wishing you all good day and God bless us all. Thank you. Good day everyone. To our principal four, Sir Riwell Alvarez, head teachers of the different departments, co-mentors, and all the mentees who are patiently watching up to this time, in spite and despite of the technical difficulties encountered. To the TIPTWG, thank you for making me a part of this Teachers Induction Program Orientation 2021. I am Maria Cristina A. Santos from English Department, tasked to share with you the TIP organization and the implementer's roles and responsibility. First, let me share with you the TIP organization. For implementation, included are the TIP manager, for the division, two, the TIP coordinator or coordinators for every district or for every cluster of schools. Third, the TIP mentors for every school or cluster of schools or district where there are mentees. Fourth, the TIP mentees or the beginning teachers who has one to three years of teaching in the public schools. And for TIP monitoring and evaluation team, Composition may include TIP coordinators and mentors. Now, let me share with you the roles and responsibility of the TIP implementers. The TIP manager's roles and functions. One, leads in the crafting of the TIP division plan that will cascade to SIP, AIP, and integrate it to the SBM. 2. Plans and conducts TIP team orientation activity. 3. Distributes the TIP materials to the TIP coordinators. 4. Fourth, leads in the monitoring of the TIP implementation. 5. Coordinates with the regional office the needed support to the division. 6. Awards, Certificate of Performance, and Recognition to Successful Inductees. 7. Awards, Certificate of Recognition to Members of the Team and School Heads. 8. Prepares the and endorses report for submission to the TSC DepEd. The TIP Coordinator, Roles and Functions. 1. Conducts orientation of the mentors and the inductees or mentees in the mentoring process. Second, arrange with the mentors and inductees to provide opportunities to work with each other. Third, administers and checks pre-test and post-tests. Fourth, evaluates with the mentor the inductees portfolio. Fifth, Retrieve and turn over the TIP materials from the inductees to the TIP manager. Sixth, certify inductees who have successfully completed. Seven, submit report to the TIP manager of the TIP implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. The TIP mentors. Let me now read to you this long list of roles and responsibilities of the TIP mentors. 1. Be a wise and trusted advisor. 2. Be willing to share knowledge and skills. 3. Provide encouragement to the inductees. 4. 
help inductees to achieve their potentials. 5. Provide professional, emotional, psychological, as well as social support to the inductees. 6. Assist the inductees along the way in the TIP implementation. 7. Conduct both formal and informal conference with the inductees. 8. Schedule regular meeting with the inductees. 9. Allow inductees to observe his or her classes. 10. Remind inductees of forms to be accomplished and evaluation to be done. 11. Together with inductees, plan a schedule in the accomplishment of every module. 12. See to it that all activities are performed by the inductees before the module is submitted. 13. Collect all finished module, check, record, and submit to the TIP coordinator. 14. Recommend to the TIP coordinator the performance of the inductees on the specific module. 15. Record significant episodes in the mentoring experiences. 16. Assist the TIP coordinators in making a comprehensive report of the implementation. 17. Assist in the monitoring and evaluation of the TIP. The inductees' roles and responsibilities. 1. Take the important role in the teacher induction program. 2. Attend the orientation activities of the TIP. 3. Plan with the mentor the different activities for the completion of the program. 4. Accomplish all activities in the induction program. 5. Confer with the mentor regularly or when the need arises. 6. Answer the pre-assessment and post-assessment in every module chosen. 7. Evaluate the total TIP performance and submit all document to the mentor. 8. Comply with all the requirements given by the mentors. 9. Make a journal or portfolio of personal and professional experiences in the TIP. 10. And the most important is to receive a certificate of performance for the successful completion of the modules and the TIP as well. Lastly, let me share these sayings to you. According to Scott Hayden, teachers have three loves, love of learning, love of learners, and the love of bringing the first two loves together. Alvin Toffler said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Lastly, Jim Ron said, Don't let your learning lead to knowledge. Let your learning lead to action. Thank you very much for listening. Once again, have a good day, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to our dear principal, Mr. Rogel A. Alvarez to our different department heads, to our fellow master, to my fellow master teachers, to our mentees or inductees, good afternoon. I am Mrs. Ray Lopinaldo from the TLE department. My task this afternoon is to present to you the last topic about the manual implementation of the TIP. So my topic this, is, this afternoon is about mentoring. Mentoring is a component of TIP, or we say teacher induction program. So what is mentoring? Mentoring is a unique relationship between two teachers, the mentor and the mentee or inductee, built on mutual trust and respect. It builds mentor's leadership capability and on mentee's personal and professional growth. What is mentoring? First, process which, which help guide 
a young professional through the different stages of his or her career. Second, a special kind of relationship between the mentor and the mentee where objectivity, credibility, honesty, trust, worthiness, and confidentiality are critical. Third, a deliberate pairing of a skilled person with a lesser skilled person on, on a mutually agreed upon. Who is the mentor? A wise and a trusted person. A significant person to the mentee. An experienced person who is willing to share his or her knowledge and skills to others. A guide, a supporter, a friend, and an advocate. And lastly, a role model. A person who is willing to help others to achieve their potentials. Now, there are some personal qualities of the mentors. First, wise. Second, kind. Role model, fourth, willing to help, fifth, objective, sixth, credible, seventh, honesty, eighth, positive, ninth, firm but compassionate, tenth, values difference, and others. But the process, during uh, the process, when we see the, the pre mentoring conference of the mentor and the mentee are the following. First, provide the overview. This is all about the TID and what are they going to do. Second, survey the needs of the mentee. So this is the work of the mentors. Third, make timetables. So everything that they're going to do, there should be a timetable. Fourth, draft the mentee the personal induction program activities. Next, mentoring activities. Number one, begin with the answering the pre-assessment. So, the mentor will give the pre-assessment to the mentee. Second, or number two, allow the inductee to progress individually, guided by his or her timetable. Number three, provide time for meetings, consultations, and conferences. So mentors will find time to reach out his or her mentee for this purpose. Next, number four, celebrate success in the completion of each module as part of encouragement and support, like positive notes of the mentor, so what are the positive side of the mentee, encouragement, or let's say the constructive criticism from the mentor and snacks together. This is the most special moment or bonding of the mentor and the mentees. Fifth, schedule class observations and demonstrations classes. Now, to conduct post-TIP conference, debriefing with the mentees, these are three. First, share success. Second, reflection. Third, we're going to plan what are the next steps. So all in all, mentors are always in reach out with their mentees so that mentees will be more encouraged to do their part being under this program, the teacher and action program. So this is these are all my presentation. Thank you and God bless. Good day teachers! My name is Annie Pro Joy Puyos. I am a newly hired teacher at Santa Ana National High School. Currently, I am committed with the MWSP Lab Department of the school. Overall, I think that the seminar was informative. As a newly hired teacher, I was oriented about the expected behaviors and proficiencies that the master teachers, the principal, and the other stakeholders of the school are expecting from me as a newly hired. 
even though the paper works in the teacher induction program might seem overwhelming at first if they would help us be better in our field of expertise especially here in the public school system I think that as really hard teachers we should try our best to accomplish the requirements we highly appreciate the master teachers the coordinators and other more experienced teacher in the public school system that are willing to help us adapt in the Department of Education. Our very dynamic and uh, supportive Principal 4, Sir Ruel A. Alvarez, our campus heads, curriculum heads, department heads, master teachers, our newly hired teachers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today, my task is to give challenge. So now, after listening to the different master teachers about the objectives of this teacher's induction program, as well as the overview of Module 1 to Module 6, now, new teachers, you are challenged. The first challenge is to answer and accomplish every module with all honesty, sincerity, dedication, and commitment. No cheating. And please submit to your respective mentors within the time frame. I know you are overloaded with many reports like the Form 10, the Promotional Report, Cards, a Year-End uh, Evaluation Report, and also the sorting of modules. But please include this TIP in your timeline. Okay? The second challenge, as you go along with this Teachers Induction Program for three years, the Department of Education challenge you to develop good values and attitude of a great teacher that will address the depth and mandate, vision, mission, and goal. In addition to this, you are challenged to memorize the depth and vision, mission, and core values. And it will be done during the mentoring session or during the departmental lab session. The third challenge. You are challenged to teach with a heart, teaching with empathy and compassion. Maybe some of you are coming from the private schools or colleges. Remember, you are now in the public schools. Some of our learners are coming from uh, Agdao area, Bolivar, uh, SIR, Bangkerohan, Bolton area, and maybe others are from Ecolan. You are challenged to be more sensitive and flexible, especially those teachers who are under the TLE department or the TVL track because you have a lot of laboratory activities. Now, the fourth challenge. You are challenged to become a resilient teacher, especially in this time of pandemic. You are challenged to embrace the new normal and lastly, te uh, teaching is a mission. Sana teachers will not only focus on salary and promotion, but more on services to our learners and stakeholders. Ang tanong, kaya ba ang challenges na ito? Lampo kaya kaya niya yan. 
So that's all. Thank you and good luck everyone. Back to you Sir Jopit and Mom Greg.